Alrighty then. Character sheet. Yep, you want to get your character sheet open and get into tabletop, because, you know. Uh, I'm in tabletop. Oh, good. Alright, good beginning. So, hello everybody, welcome to Crabby d d Hopefully there will be no more dropped frames. That was a late start because of that. I am here with my players, Harlan. Hello. Jamie. Hi. Simon. Hello. Suds. Hello. Sam. Sam. Hello. <laughs> yes, hello. Hello. And Inferno. Inferno. Uh, he's not here. Inferno's dead. I swear I did say hello properly the first you, time. Uh, didn't hear me. No, we didn't hear. Inferno's not here. Alright, I'm putting his character outside. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> hey, there we go. Took long enough. So yes, uh, we're here for Crabby D and D. Usual announcements, thank you to Snosa for all the artwork, tabletop audio for all of the sound, music, and effects. Uh, maps are made on incarnate.com by me. I do take commissions. And yeah, this is done on Tabletop's new layer. So, with that out of the way, I want to get straight into today because there's a lot that could happen. So, if you're all sitting comfortably. Never. Never. That's because of crippling back pain. Um, I'm kidding. I'm always sitting comfortably. This chair has been moulded to me. Oh um. no. <laughs> Whenever I try and leave, there's a ripping sound. <laughs> oh. I don't know if it's me or the chair. I don't care to find out. Uh. Anyway. Our party of adventurers. Elzian, Quaglod, Sasha, Malcolm, Burn and Rook. With Elzion and Sasha having their wonderful wedding during the middle of this six-month time skip that they had otherwise planned in advance, the wedding took place, and through a use of a glorious ceremony, the two of them were bound in uh, the two of them were bound in marriage with the rest of the party and various guests attending. Some of great power and wealth, others of more of a humble uh, beginning and origin. With this taking place. Elzion's mother, a seeming villain from Elzion's past, had shown up to the wedding, offering her congratulations and passing on the wedding gifts while heading in to attend the wedding itself, otherwise handing Elzion off to Sasha. <clears throat> With this ceremony taking place and the after-party becoming an interesting and otherwise wonderful Diversion from all of this. Elzion found himself getting drunk, and with what memories he had of his mother, Shariel Allure, being a conniving and cunning and dangerous person, Elzion prepared himself. But when he confronted her in his more drunken state, Things begin to unfold in a manner he had not expected or anticipated. He began to find that a lot of what he was talking about didn't seem quite right, even though he was convinced that this is what was happening. Everyone else seemed to believe otherwise. Feeling turned upon, Elzion otherwise decided that it was best to take some time alone, while his mother and her four house guards left. With this, the party began to unfold the various uh, matters of what would, happening, what would happen. And with a successful divine intervention, Aturang cleared Elzion's mind of the fog that had been there for so long. As Elzion began to remember what happened, various things transpiring, his uncle, Delman Arnuk, was the one doing all of this. An otherwise tall, uh, tall elven individual, kind of an almond brown hair, and otherwise a very smart look about him, had seemingly done all of what had taken place, manipulating Elzion, shifting the vision of how this had happened, potentially even being the one who's casting the spell on Elzion, the one who's planted the seeds there. With this beginning to unfold and unravel, the party began to see what would happen, so they confronted Elzion's mother vying for a conversation, but with some hastily cast spells, seemingly in a method to bypass any defences, regardless of what they said, 
The party expended some uses and took quite a few hits as they arrived at Elzin's mother's room. A conversation ensued as they talked about these various matters, an extraction team arriving the next day to remove Shariel, but the party believed they needed to get there sooner. With the teleportation cast and various uncoverings that Sovek's skull had a secret seeming sending or spell of a similar origin placed within the skull itself, spying on the party, the party proceeded to use a teleport spell making their way over to the Elven Kingdoms, arriving with one of the guards to meet and talk with Elzion's father. A greater restoration is cast as he remembers things that had been wiped also. Kira was safe, and now the party had decided that with... with Elzion's father they would travel and head their way towards Delman's mansion. Upon arriving you see the exterior grounds, the otherwise relatively well-kept garden that otherwise wraps around the edge of this small mansion in comparison to what uh, the Allure family has, but a mansion nonetheless. Two layers to it, the ground floor and the first floor. You can see that there is very little light coming from the interior as the curtains are drawn at this current time. However, you do see a bell hanging from the side of the, uh, from the, side of the uh, pillar next to the door. With the party otherwise arriving, Emiriel otherwise moves up, rings the bell with a clang, and takes a step back towards the rest of the guards. Is there anything you would like to do before the door opens? Any spells you would wish to cast, or preparations you wish to make? Going in here, follow my lead. I'm not sure how I'm going to interact, interact with my good old uncle but uh if 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 we are going to murder him i would like to be the one to you know kill him yeah that's understandable <laughs> given the business with sovak i can't justify leaving him alive but i'm more than happy to stand back on that Okay, lead on, Elzion. Okay, anything else you people wish to, to cast, escape, or anything they wish to check? Uh, uh, make sure the tech magic is refreshed, but... Okay. Yeah, that's the main one I was thinking of if you were going to be having that up. Just for this. Mm. Mm. Just to maximize its duration. Yeah. Harlan desperately scrolls through spells. This is, this is what I told you to yeah. prep for at the end of last week, so... You've had a week yeah. to prepare. Contemplating that casting armor of Agathos, but with only two spell slots left, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about doing stuff. I don't think we need to worry too much about doing stuff in preparation. When uh, we don't know what we'll be facing in here. Okay. Fair enough. With it's that, a... you it's hear what well, looks to be you hear a key enter the door lock and it turn before the door is partially pulled open with a chain otherwise tugging on the edge of where the door frame is as a elven figure does look out can i help you at this hour uh yes uh, i am looking for delman arnuk we need to talk urgently the master of the house is currently meditating unfortunately i don't think it would be wise to wake him can you come back at another time uh no no we yeah. can't uh, I, I i'm his uh, i'm his nephew elsian um he squints. Go ahead and make me a persuasion check with advantage. Because you are indeed <laughs> Elzion. <laughs> For a second I was like, you are. Am I? Am I Elzion? <laughs> yes, it's just to see if he recognizes you. Oh, I know I, which one. I, talk, I, oh. did, I, I knew which way that was going to land when oh. I saw it. <laughs> that is still a 10. Right? Yes, still a 10. He looks out from the door. Ah. Elzion, it has been some time. Unfortunately, your uncle is... It, it is incredibly urgent. It, it's, it's about my mother. Right. Um, I'll... Uh, you kind of hear, you hear a muffled voice from inside. With those of you with high passive perception, you hear a voice otherwise speak out and say, Duncan, who is it at this time? 
I heard your I heard your footsteps from upstairs. What's going on? Oh, um, Master, your nephew, Elzian's here. Um, he wishes to speak with you about your sister? Ah, uh, yes. Um, yes, of course. Uh, welcome him in. Um, is it just Elzian, or...? Uh, no, sir. It's, um, a few of them. By all means. I, I, I'm going to call out. Uh, hello, Uncle. We have a lot to talk about. And no, my friends won't leave. Let us in or we'll find our own way in. Okay, little little bit strident there. Um, as you as you do say that, you hear some footsteps kind of come close to the door. As the door closes, you hear the chain and loop otherwise be pulled off. As you see, standing before you, a in otherwise what looks to be that of a knight uh, knight clothing, a uh, otherwise set of spectacles on the kind of the bridge of his nose as he does look down at the rest of you. You see flowing purple hair combed over to one side and shaved on the other uh, as he otherwise kind of stands there um, looking out at all of you. It is good to see you again, Elzian. Mm. No, and by all means, you're welcome to come in. I'll get myself in a bit of a bit more <laughs> appropriate manner. Uh, do make yourself at home. Uh, Duncan, if you could please uh, have them, uh, have one of these staff cook up some food for the early morning. Um, I'll let them make the requests. That, we won't be needing any food. We don't. I don't intend to stay long. Well, I'll still need to get changed. Um, can't be having a conversation in my night clothes, so... Maybe you can. Maybe you can have a conversation in just your night clothes. I don't know what you're implying, but I'm... Oh, bullshit. Let's drop the acts, shall we? I mean, can I insight this guy, please? Because I, I don't want this to be another situation. I will allow... It. I will allow Sasha and yeah, Elzian yeah. to make insight checks here. Because Elzian, because it's a story, and Sasha, because she made the call for this. Uh, inside that's plus 11, so 25. Oh, that's a 28. Okay. The two of you... Uh, high five. The two of you, as you otherwise kind of begin to uh, kind of read him, he is putting on an act, but the act is honest to a degree. He was expecting you to arrive, mm -hmm. but he genuinely doesn't necessarily want to... You can tell he's not wanting this to start in conflict, and he just wants to get changed out of his night clothes. For the sake of comfort, rather than fine, that fine. Thank you. Go get changed. Please make yourselves at home. Um, he will. As he otherwise wanders in. Um, the lounge is on the left, and the uh, dining room is on the right. When you enter in, um, I'll let you make the choice on where you would like to lounge talk. Very well. I will put his tile down for the purposes of so you can look at him in all of his glory. I hate him though. Oh my god. I yeah. hate it so much because it's got the half shaved head. <laughs> he's not an alert, he's head. an Arnook. So his hair isn't black, yeah. it's almond by base, so he's dyed it mm. purple. Mm. I will be back in a moment. Ah, uh, I see. So what you're <laughs> telling me is that my uncle is a yeah. uh, is a scene kid. That's what you're telling me. You're telling me my uncle is seen, and I don't like it. Okay. As also, you... he's wearing Loki's jacket. I'm aware. I'm aware that his entire thing says, "Look at me. I'm an asshole. Stab me." And I. That's will. not. That's not the jacket you I was know... going for from the art that I gave Chloe. But sure. <laughs> you see yeah. what I mean, though, right? I, see I what can you mean, see. Though, yeah. Now that you've said that, yeah, it's like, huh? That's. Hmm. He looks smug, and there's only one smug at only room. <laughs> There's only room enough for one smug elf. Well, okay. we know that there, there's relativity there. Okay. As you otherwise enter the central chamber, he heads up the uh, heads up the main stair. Otherwise, heading up to the um, uh, uh, top as floor. he goes up, I just wanted to, go, Uncle. Hmm. No tricks. He he looks back down. This will be a conversation if you'll have it. 
and he heads upstairs. Uh, as you all enter, Simon's not here. Simon's had to be right back, hasn't he? Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Wait, please, could you tell us if if he sees any weird de detecty magic -y bullshit? Um, first things first. Arnok has no magic on him, nor is he de nor is he giving off any magic. Okay. Which uh. is strange. It's the same as what your mother had, in that regard that she is she was devoid of magic, even though she's an elf. Psionics. Mm. Um. Could be. No. Does Psionics show up for detect magic? Psionics gives off a different signal, but it is still there. But it does 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 get detected. Okay. Yeah. So there's nothing. No. Um. The other thing of note. Uh, as you all enter the area, you can see uh, you walk kind of along the uh, the green kind of entrance carpet. Uh, Duncan does proceed to kind of gesture to the. Um, coat rack and does kind of offer to take any clothes to um, put on the uh, coat hangers and stuff or uh, the stand that's there uh, uh, is there any food that I could offer any of you um, drinks perhaps if you're going to lounge we haven't got too many seats in the lounge you'd be better suited going to the to the dining hall for that but make a sandwich Elson's going to go in and just lie down on one of these uh, chaise, chaise long over here. Okay. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, did you just call it a chaise long? I forgot what they're actually called. It... Chaise longe. Chaise longe. I oh, I'm it. sorry. As you as you ask for a bacon sandwich, he goes, Um, we don't do too much meat. Bacon isn't really a specialty. We can do rabbit or deer. In... Sure, that'll do. Cooked. If it was once alive... Yeah. It's good to go in a sandwich. Vegetables you were once alive. Most, most, most plants were once alive. I, I'll get something for you. I'll get something for you. Anything for the rest of you? Drinks? Food? Hmm. Uh, I'd, appre I'd appreciate a glass of water. Uh, and if you have any of those... Um, those... Um, they're like little dried fruits, but they've got sugar over the top of them. Uh, we had them at the wedding. Um... What are they called? Dried fruits with sugar over the top. Uh, candied fruits or something. I can't remember what the actual... You know what I'm talking about. It was one of those weird elven things. Of course. I'll see if we've got any lying around. Does, be I'm just being me, mildly offensive just to mess with this guy. He does wander off. Quake Lord, now that you're back. I heard the sound Indeed of I am. plate and food. Um, mm -hmm. As you wander in with the detect magic up, wandering in with your companions, Delman Arnok gave off no magical resonance whatsoever. Psionics does still give off a resonation, so something is up. It was the same as Elzian's mother in that regard. Mm -hmm. As you do head in, you kind of immediately take in the surroundings, and you see what look to be 12 to 15 of these floating orbs, almost like scrying orbs, looking around kind of the entr uh, entrance hallway. Um, marching order is you're kind of near the back you watch as each one floats up to each of your companions and you watch as this wave of energy shoots over the surface of them and you watch as they for a moment become devoid of magic before one eventually, before one eventually floats to you and you lose concentration on detect magic and all of you lose concentration on any spells you had previously cast no do we do the rest of us like fail this? No, because none of you have spells that you could lose in this well, instance. Fair. If you cast spells, you'd figure out that these things are mm. hit. Dominonic heads upstairs. Um, where would the rest okay. of you like to position yourselves within the lounge? For note, there is a door here, a door here, and a door Actually, on the back wall here as well. Elzin's going to get into the, the most flamboyant position he can. Okay. Uh, as you head into the room, as you otherwise pushing the door open and taking a look inside, the interior is decorated with a variety of plants, and as you can see, there are three lounge sofas otherwise in place with cushions over the uh, kind of over the headrests for each. You see what looks to be a series of children's toys near one of them, and a number of uh, books that have otherwise been placed back on the bookshelf, not necessarily in a particular order, but the ones closer to the bottom seem to be children's books. You recognise a few of the spine titles, potentially ones handed down from your family. But do I know if my uncle has any children? Not when you were alive, or not when you were here, no. Hmm. Well then, I think we should try and keep this civil for as long as we can. Oh, if, if, we, if we don't, if we uh, 
I'm quite glad if we there may be a chance there may be a chance that uh some so, weird funky shit is happening. So where would you like to position you... yourselves in this? Is the mm -hmm. um after fighting oh, with the door I've made in the um <sighs> for a moment, right? What was it, uh, Simon? The, the butler, he left the room for the moment. He left the room for the moment and is otherwise going to be coming back with various foods and stuff. Okay, yeah. That's cool. Okay, while while we have a moment with him, uh, for experimentation's sake, I'm going to attempt to cast Message. Okay. On? On Elzium. Okay. Um... Okay, what do you say? Okay, so in response to his comment that something funky could happen. It already has. They have magical defenses. Dispelling. Ending the effects of various spells. Wonderful. Uh, Sasha and Byrne, please position yourselves if you are going to be in this room with everyone else. I was just thinking where to go. Okay. Uh, you said there was a door where precisely? Uh, here, here, and here. Okay. Um, do you mind if I open this door? There's no one around to stop you. You can try. I open the door. You kind of grab the door handle. You kind of begin to turn it. It's locked. I can unlock it. No, oh, no, Chris. Oh, we I open the door. <laughs> Smash. Do you wish to try and break the door? I'm, I'm just going to steadily ap apply more pressure to the door in the hopes that um, this puny elven architecture will just crumble underneath okay, my okay. Go ahead and... magically assisted fight. Go ahead and roll me a strength check, please. Would, would you would not just insult the entirety of elves? <laughs> we are people too. Uh, Don't hear yeah. that. Uh, uh, yeah. 18. 18. You continue applying pressure... The door handle, ting, snaps. But it isn't still locked. Oh, Asha. I start casting Mending. That takes a minute to cast, good to know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to drop it the moment that anything happens. No, it's fine. He's not, yeah, hurried, not... he's not hurriedly putting on armor or anything, so he's going to take a little while to get here. So I'll say for the sake of this, you cast Mending. The door handle is fixed back in place. You think it's the correct angle? You're not entirely sure. Asha, can you please not break things until we know there's an actual Infernal? fight to be had here? Yeah. All right. See where you want to put yourself. And then, when a fight actually happens, let's break everything. I am 100% up for that. Because this man raised my grandfather from the dead. That alone is reason for Craiglock to kill him, and that alone is for us to kill him. Okay. Malcolm, is there anything you would like to do? I am inspecting books. Okay. Looking over the books, quite a lot of them seem to be fantasy or leisurely reads um, on this bookshelf anyway. As you otherwise kind of look at the, the other bookshelf, you see that they are similar, but quite a lot of them are children's storybooks. And a few of them are infant, infant levels. Hmm. So yeah. first letters, A, B, C, that sort of thing. Oh, he's learning his alphabet. Ah, you had that book he, when, I was, when I was a little elf. He is prepared for feeble mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Let's test that, shall we? Hmm. We need, I don't want to make the same mistake I made for my mother, so we need to make sure that things are very clear. We know exactly what's happening. I'm, but yeah, I'm mostly just going to sit here and just wait, and when he comes in, I am paying very close attention to him. Okay. A few moments Likewise. pass. Eventually, you watch as the door is opened as Duncan returns with a rabbit bacon sandwich for Rook and a glass of water for Sasha. A few moments after that, the door otherwise opens, and you watch as... Um, uh, and you watch as Delman otherwise wanders into the room, kind of pushes the door open in a very kind of well-made and slightly flamboyant um, kind of 
teal and cyan robe uh, with kind of these golden embellishments and otherwise uh, brown uh, brown trousers that kind of continue on all the way down to the ankles. A slight necklace kind of wrapping around the uh, the neck as he otherwise wanders into the room. Thank you for, for waiting. So, um, what is it you wish to discuss? As he otherwise wanders into a little bit more into the center of the room, mm -hmm. as he does take a seat on the end of the at the end of the um, the lounge seat. Well then, uh, Uncle, uh, what do you know of psionics? A fair deal. Hmm. Do you possess psionics of your own? I do. Hmm. As did you. As did I. You know why we're here, right? I have my speculations. What I can tell, you raised my grandfather from the dead. Ah, that. Uh, th that's not all. Um, you, you, so this is my speculation's mind. Um, you, you have manipulated my mind in such a way that I have now truly made an enemy of my own mother before the perceived enemy that she was before. Um, erased the memory of my two brothers from my parents. Oh, and any sign of my two brothers from our house. Um, and all of this has really led up to the most... To, 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 the, to the harshest insult that could be put upon me. You ruined my wedding day. I'm... Confused? No. The wedding day won slightly, but that I can speculate as to what may have happened. Maybe? Maybe? So don't deny any of these accusations? No. I knew this day would one day come. Hoping it wouldn't happen so soon, but one day I Stop thought that they would. On... Stop beating on the bush and just tell us why. Who put you up to it, if anyone? And if not, just tell us your reasons for doing this, and then we can be on our way. There are different people for different reasons, or different reasons from different people in certain extent. Sovek coming back, I'd have to get it for you, but it's in his will. He wanted to come back and mess with the family. It sounds like he'd do that. I honestly, oh, that now, so from what I remember from my grandfather. It. That sounds so plausible. Uh, I would like to see his will. That's in, like, in, that's right. I can do. One thing I will actually do before all of this, as you're all magically esteemed folk, and I know what happened with Hurricane. I'm going to do this out of my own Whoa. volunteer volunteer mm -hmm. for this. I assume that at least some of you can dispel magic, correct? Yes. I am willing to cast glibness on myself to allow you to dispel it. I have. I do not want tricks here. I am willing to give the truth. I do not want to use magic for my tricks. I imagine some of you were a little bit perplexed by the sentries when you came in the door. Oh, this feels so shady. I know. Um, if this was an illusion, Quagwell would have picked it up. Correct. She does have witch sight. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Witch sight picks up nothing from him. By the way. There are, he, There's he, no he real is, way he to hide is here, that. He is real. Which site is unaffected by anything else? The only exception to this would be debatably non-detection, but that even then is very kind of air eh, because this isn't true sight. This is something special, which is what non-detection fools. So I would state that which site would overwrite non-detection in most situations. Hmm. So this is the real him. This is real clothing. This is real everything. Including the colour of his hair. Yeah, well, that needs to change. No. I used to grow the upper side out. It upsets me. <laughs> Just because you're covered in hair. You're not wrong. 
So I have to ask, Listen. Uncle, what, what's with the haircut? Do you like it? Purple's a bit much. Look, I'm trying out different hair colors. It's going gray, so... Uh, I wanted to try out something extravagant. Almond was nice back when it was almond, but yes. Are you willing to let me do this so that this conversation can continue in a more respectable manner? I am very well aware of what all of you are capable of. I heard what happened with Vobval. I heard what happened with the King of Blood. How? I am in How? no position to fight. And I'm guessing... How did you... Sorry. How did you find out about that? Servo. Oh. Your, right, grand... Your grandfather had in the will that he wanted you... He wanted him to be raised from the dead to mess with family. I needed a tool to keep an eye on you, and when I'd spoken with my sister, your mother, she she found that a lot of the spies had been killed that were keeping an eye on you. For that reason, I recommended using a slightly more covert method. When she found out that that was in father's will, she was very objective against the actual acting of his will, but... will. His will is. I, as it I didn't be. think. Sorry, he's talking about Sovak as if Sovak's his father. I didn't think is he it was. No, Sovak was father on uh, grandfather on father's side. His paternal grandfather. Oh shit! My entire plot just went out the window. Fuck. No, it doesn't. It doesn't no. change the plot. But I thought. Uh, hold on. I... He, he... Hmm. Yeah. No, because uh, Sovak didn't really like. Elvzin's mother. Yeah, Shael. He, he kept on... She's oh, his daughter-in-law. Yes, no, that is correct. Okay. Well, in which yeah, case... The actual plot, in uh, which case, but... the only thing which would be here is that the objection from Shariel instead comes from... Um, Emiriel. Emiriel. Yes. Okay, I had him on the wrong side of the family there. And he doesn't call yeah. him father. Father-in-law. So I don't even know if he counts as father-in-law. Anyway. I don't know how that, that technically no, works. No, that would be... Technically, he is dude in the family. You, 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 can, you can get away with calling him father-in-law. Yeah. Okay, because this is bringing some weird um, yeah. family tree issues on, yeah. on the level of Alabama or the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Uncle-in-law? You go with that. Sure. I don't know. Sure. Why not? Fuck it. But... <laughs> There's probably an Alabama so... word that means uncle-in-law. Yes. Sovak wanted to be brought back. The nature of which, uh, he detailed something undead to mess with the family, but not too many fleshy bits. Um, there's not really much else I can say to that. Originally, Emeriel was handling it all, and I'm the one in charge. Anyway, with this back on track, I'm going to cast Glibness. Understand? Fine. Get ready for the dispel. And you watch as well, each of you feel kind of this very saint, faint but subtle magic release. You've never seen Glibness be cast before, but Elzin, you know that the components for it are simply verbal, as he does say a few words as the spell is released. If any of you would. Uh, God, he's so convincing. Uh yeah, that's about the back of the head. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, show okay. spell magic. Okay. Uh, I what believe, level? I believe from what I know that it's eighth level, so I'll match it just to make sure it actually goes away. Okay. Using what knowledge you remember, you otherwise use spell magic at eighth level. The spell completes, and you watch, and you watch as kind of this slightly raised up attitude shifts and disperses as you feel the glibner spell gone. Are we good to talk now? Is yes. there going into this in the in the spirit of openness, would you also consent to calling off your sentries so that I may cast detect magic? They're natural with the location that we're in. They're special artifacts. I can't necessarily turn them off, but they don't come into this room unless commanded to do so. Mm. Okay. 
So long as the if door is mind. closed, they will remain in the hallway. Very well. I'm going to... If the door isn't closed currently, I will walk over and close it. Okay. And then cast Detect Magic again. Okay. Casting Detect Magic and looking around the room, uh, you note um, the entire interior of the kind of expanse of this place is filled with kind of this light air of magic. Um, quite a lot of the natural lighting in here is magical. Quite a lot of the um, books that are on the shelves do kind of seem to have like a magical tomeness to them. Same way a spell book would, made from enchanted pink uh, ink and paper to kind of keep themselves from being damaged, particularly the children's books. Uh, a number of the plant pots are magical. A large portion of the furniture otherwise appears magical. Um, simple prestidigitation magic. And uh, outside Very of... comfortable. Very clean. <laughs> Outside of that, you sense no magic on him, and you see no more of these orbs around the room. So, uh, we should be good to continue the conversation. Mm. Thank you. Start from the beginning. Where would you like me to start in particular? Um. Now, what? First of all, what came first? The raising of of grandfather or the manipulation of my mind my mother's mind and my father's mind to convince me to kill my brother and have my parents forget either of my brothers ever existed I'll start with Sovek that one's a bit quicker uh, Sovek was around 10 years ago when he passed away I received his will usual stuff and court of order political families so and so mm. I received the will, I checked through it after Emeriel passed it to me, told me this information, and I looked it over and did what the will said. Bring him back, and use his skeleton to, and he does air quotes, fuck with the family. I love the thought the entire party is just sat just going, you won't dispute it, but that's so in character. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I would like to be seeing that that will at That's, some point. That I can get. It should be in my study. Uh, you can send Duncan to get it. I don't think Duncan would find it inside the study. Uh, you can go later then. Um, hmm. th now the other thing, the more important thing, the thing that's messed with my entire life, ruined my relationship with my mother, and made both my parents forget that 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 they've had two sons for myself. So let me begin with why that has all occurred. The one thing that I want from all of this... Have you heard of the System Foundation Order? Yes, Father told, told me about it. They were once the leading faction as part of mm. the Elven Kingdoms. They, alongside the other, uh, the other such powers, were the ones who ruled alongside the Verdant Leaf the Ashwood, and the Ashwood Council at the time, with the mm -hmm. Bloodbriar Court bringing up the rear as a smaller faction, and the Shadow Leaf, or Shadow Root Foundation, as it was once known then, wasn't really surfaced. During the atrocities 500 years ago, when I was younger, my family was on the leading perform performing of a breakthrough. And when the atrocities occurred, a particular powerful entity, one that was later branded as a betrayer god, decided to use the Psy Foundation against the rest of the Elven Kingdom. Uh, this, this entity... does it have a name? Maldras. We recognise Maldras, don't we? You do. Was that the name of the being of enmity, or...? No. no. Maldoras is one of the uh, forgotten gods. One of the mm. ones who shaped reality around it. Okay. It used the powers of its own psionics to disrupt our own, turning the entirety of the System Foundation on its people. The Bloodbriar Court took over and killed off the majority of us, but it its effects varied from person to person. I myself, being one of a more 
bolstered psionic nature, was able to resist such effects as if it was nothing but a buzzing fly, but to others it was a raging torrent of wind and noise, something that disrupted their flow of life and controlled them. This change was what brought about the shift within the Elven Kingdoms, a large portion of our own populace fighting and killing one another during the atrocities. All thanks to that simple change. Mm. I, myself, and the Arnok family went into hiding. Your mother included, when she was still young. <laughs> we went into hiding, away from it all, making our selves unknown and seeking refuge with the Shadowleaf's roots, as they saw that there was a difference between those of strong will and those of weak will. As a result, I was freed and otherwise left unharmed from the previous psionic purging. And your mother, when she grew up, after she learned the truth, was willing to help me in my mission to bring the System Foundation back to its former glory, back to when it was truly, truly a good place in time. Ah, uh, so you want it all back for, oh, you want it all back to how it was. Not necessarily. We realized that the System Foundation did have weaknesses, and that is how Maldoras got in. And we did want to shift that entire parameter. Those who were strong of will would be the ones who would found the System Foundation, but they would not be a leading power. They would be one of an equal amongst the many other courts. Mm. That was the plan. Your two older brothers were the first of this project. Your eldest brother... Ravalas was skilled and capable, but his powers soon stagnated, unable to progress any further. As the eldest son, he was one of the... or as the first son, he was one of the strongest. But his powers didn't grow past a certain potential, not like that of mine or your mother's, yet her powers were weakened and lessened as time went on. That warranted his death? No. What warranted his death was what happened after. Your second brother, Thelus, he was surging in power, capability and potential, and he was being trained, but he went off book. He decided to take things into his own hands and discovered a component known as Mistweed. He hey. used it to own, to understand his own intelligence and advance his own psionics. Doing so... He overdosed. That I am aware of. With his death, your eldest brother, Rivalis, was threatening to undermine the entire operation. Threatening to expose the family as psionic to the Bloodbriar court, to fathers, your father's family, truly. As a result of this, I needed to take action. Not for my sake, but for your mother's, and for your own, and don't, for the family. Don't, don't you dare. Don't you Insight. dare. Ta don't you Insight. dare. Go ahead. So, yes. You, you incite while I, while I get angry. Um, you may incite if you wish, as, as you're the one conversation you can hear. Mm. Don't you dare try and tell me this was all for my own good. Don't you dare try and tell me that was for my mother's good. Uh, total? 20. 20? Uh, and... Not, not that high. Uh, Elson's getting angry. Uh, 12. Okay. 12, he's hard to read. 20, he seems to be telling the truth. Although you don't fully understand why that makes sense. Oh, he can... He can... The thing is, if he's telling the truth, he may honestly believe it, but, uh... Are you aware of what happens if a psionic is found within the Elven Kingdoms? Enlighten me. If a psionic is discovered under any particular roof, the entire household is killed outright. Execution no matter the age. Whether it be three days old or three hundred years old, it matters not. 
if they discovered that your brother and I were otherwise psionic, you, your mother, your father, myself, and my wife would all have been killed for what would be marked as purgatory treason. If your brother had done what he'd done, you yourself and your mother would not be alive. I had to defend the family. You didn't need to use to me this. as your tool to do it. No. Can I, can I insight the bit where he's specifically where he's talking about the the consequences of being a of, of a psionic in the family? Because I mean that feels like something we have to like insight. Go ahead. I'll say just you for this one. Um, uh, Twenty six. Twenty six. You get the sense that he is indeed telling the truth. And from what you heard previously, from what Emerio said, the fact that the guards reacted so badly to the nature of mentioning that your mother may have been psionic, or that she was perceived as psionic in your mind, suggests that what he's saying is true, and that, depending on the nature of things, Gears may already be in motion with what Elzian's already said around the guards. Uh... Oh, shit. Oh... You get this sense that he, Delman, is otherwise completely unaware to this entire event that's occurred. But what he says, you get the feeling it's the truth. It's, it's very un, it's very concerning as you do think about that. Sorry, I'm back. Did you ask him if he was the one that had the silver skull thing? He, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, yeah. he knew. That's how he knew about uh, the last parts of our adventures. Yeah. Okay. He just shut up and admitted to that. Yeah. What was the last thing you asked, Elzian, before uh, the insight check? I forgot my train of thought where I was. Uh, didn't need to use ah, uh, Elzian yes. as a tool. You Could weren't a tool himself. in that manner. I'm not... In my instance, if I were to approach him, he wasn't going to trust me. Originally, when we had discussed, I said I would take this blame upon myself. You objected and said that it doesn't matter that you had to do what needed to be done, but I couldn't let that happen. Oh, I'm insight into that. I... Okay. Sorry, I know, there's a lot of insight. No, that's here. fine. 25. Okay. You kind of... As you do sit there and kind of watch as he does say these things, of, like, you saying that, you sit there and you insight, and for a moment you kind of zone out slightly as he does, like, continue talking. There's a moment where he does kind of note, note this and does pause for the rest of you. As you watch as Elzin does begin to think back, go ahead and roll me a history check. I'll say with advantage because your mind has been recently returned to you. My advantage rolls aren't doing good today. Uh, that's still a 17. You think back. As your memories are beginning to clear... You remember that you and him were on good graces before whatever that happened here, before you fled. You and him were both on good graces with one another. You were a potential psionic, growing in power and strength, and then something went wrong. You get the general sense that he betrayed your trust initially by casting something similar to Dominate Person on you. And from what he's saying, as he does kind of continue talking for the moment, kind of mentioning that he did it unconsensually for the purposes of keeping you clear of any justice that may follow you through later. That's fucking toxic. Um... I did this so that you wouldn't be the one committing the crime, so that you didn't suffer guilt. The same way that I wiped the existence of your two brothers from the minds of many. For that I did pay dearly. I believe you know very well of how powerful wishes can be and the toxicity they take from you. Mm, I'm starting to... I'm starting to understand. There were thousands of individuals who were aware of your brother's deaths. The first one dying from a drug accident which otherwise took a big hit to Shariel's standing within the political points but when your elder brother died in a accident and you fled the scene i needed to remove that all you were spotted against 
everything that I tried, and word got out. So using what powers I had, you watch as he otherwise rolls back his right sleeve, and you uh, see that covering his right arm are a number of these large groove-like scars, almost in like slight teardrop or eye shapes, covering a large portion of his arm. They look almost abnormally similar to the ones that Sasha has from when she used her Divine Intervention to get access to True Resurrection. Ah. I did what needed to be done to erase their memories. From everyone, every trace, all of it. Your mother didn't was... mine, though, did you? It didn't work on you. I don't know why, but it didn't. I'm guessing, presumably, because you were dominated at the time. Oh yes, the domination. Definitely a great way for me to avoid guilt. Still my hand that pushed him. That is true. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry to interrupt family thing, I know. But technically I'm married to him. You are family now, Sasha, Why yes. did you pretend to be his mother? That's that's... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting that part of the whole thing. That part of it is unfortunately a manifestation of these spells. The spells in question, the one particularly made, is called Nightmare Seed. The idea for it is that it will manifest itself in the form of the individual's worst nightmares. Due to the manifestation of how the memories were warped and how you remembered your mother as the villain rather than me, that caused the entire effect. Mm. It was a manifestation of what you believed was the evil. Now that you know the truth, I imagine it will appear as me in all of your future nightmares, if there are any to come. But I don't plan I, on using I, it any further. Oh, and such a big insight. Go ahead. Hold your hands out. Uh, uh, oh, go on. Only 21 yes. this time. Uh, yes, do you mind if I ask a question? No, I don't mind. Ask, it, ask away. Ask okay. any questions you like. Uh, out of curiosity for myself, if all of this is to be true, then what's what was it doing you using the seeds on them? Those seed things. Which one? Are you referring to night, the Nightmare Seeds or the Shadow Seeds? Uh, shadow I Seeds. Can, yeah, I believe that's the one that his father said. Yeah. Shadow Seeds. The Shadow Bloom the, Seeds. Yeah, the, the, shadow bloom bloom seed. the Shadow Bloom Seeds have two functions. The first of which was the primary function which you all consented to originally, looking at Queglod, Sasha, and Elzian. Your friend Behold and Chronicle are no longer with you, it seems. Or not here, anyway. <laughs> but you all consented to the use of them. The primary use is for non-detection. It keeps you under the effect permanently, and I gave you... And he otherwise reaches into his coat and pulls out a amulet of non-detection. The same, and looking very similar to the one that you yourself own. I gave you one of my own to make sure that it would keep you protected. Your mother owns one, as does your father. He tucks it back into his shirt. The seeds were to protect you against... He kind of turns and looks at Quaglod. Your parents. They were hunting you and what remained of the wingless down at the time, and I needed to do what was necessary to hide you, for Elzian's sake and for his companion's sake at the time. Well, that you raises a good question. What do you know of the prills? They're a toxic mm, I bunch. Of <sighs> Your family is certainly an interesting one. Quite a lot. Your mother and father, from what I understand, are of a... undead origin. Although the nature of their undeadness is vague. From what I understand, it is more similar to vampirism than it is to... Zombies or skeletons. Some form of extra place they can go to regenerate or recuperate. With the 
nature of what I understood, they were otherwise trying to find you and take you down with a belief that something was to happen, that without you they would be able to complete their objectives. Their objectives I know only partially of. This does go a little bit off topic, but when they... They did try to come to the Elven Kingdoms. They tried to seek an audience with the Elven King himself. They tried to speak with him and offer him an object. I, being the representative for House Allure to a certain extent on the side of it all, more of an Arnok business and Shadowleaf representative, but where the Elven King was unable to be attended to, they were unable to speak to him. Your mother was the next in line to converse with him, the politician at hand. I used a little bit of disguise magic to intercept this message after hearing word that they were trying to kill the representative. I used the magic that I needed to do to hide myself in plain sight and make myself aware to them without them realizing that I wasn't your mother. And when they arrived, they gave me an object. Ah, uh, he stretches out his hand and you watch as a minor image conjures of an anchorage crest. Can I go refresh on the ma of what an anchorage crest is? An anchorage okay. crest is, from what you remember, that is the thing that the being of enmity and the being of theatre were housed within. It seems to lock on to particular places of power and creates a lair for that, that creature. However, the nature of the creature summoned either varies from creature from person to person activating it, or it's fixed based on the creature within. You were, aren't sure. You never got to experiment with it. And where is this object now? I gave it back to them, simply because if I didn't, then things were going to get messy. Mm. That's they, that is the smartest thing you've, you've done so far. They arrived and gave me the crest, saying it was a gift for the king, and that it was something that they wanted to give in earnest, a peace offering, you could say. Upon taking it, I took it to where I have most of my research and work take place. I studied it, and I found that it seems to link to something. A darker creature, I'm not sure. But I know that it links to particular, particular points. With a little bit of studying, I discovered that the runes on the surface of the Anchorage Crest are actually a mimicry of the ley lines that run beneath particular points and areas. The runes and themselves mimic the ley lines almost like a mirror, and when I moved it from here to the Ocean Kingdoms, it shifted entirely. The entire rune surface and pattern shifted and changed. They mimic that of magic, and when activated I have no idea what they do. But if it has anything to do with ley line magic, I can't let that stand in the, o the Empire. The Elven Kingdoms. You are aware of what the ley lines mean to an a to an ancient forest such as this one, right? As he looks around all of you. Uh, that big... makes a lot of sense. That can be a big deal, I guess. You remember what happened to the mm. Stone Ring Forest? Mm. That had a ley line sink in the middle of it, which was the Blind Butcher. If a ley line sink were to be made and placed in the Elven Kingdoms, over the course of a month, an entire nation would be wiped out as the trees died. We rely on the trees for presumably most things and most things, buildings, food, shelter, protection. protection, all of it, magic as well. If an entire species of elves loses the ability to use magic due to an arcane sink, the entire Elven Kingdoms dies mm. overnight over the course of a few weeks. Well. I gave it back to them after they came asking what I had done with it. I approached them and I had mentioned that the king was unwilling to accept such gifts as they are suspicious. 
and that I could either hold on to it to try and use it at a later date, or I could try to work on it. But otherwise, I didn't know what I'd be able to do. They took it back. I asked them for more information, and they seemed a little bit more willing to accept me into their group for a time. What your family is doing, Queglod, is far beyond me. That is why the System Foundation is such an important thing. Why I couldn't have you returning. Why, if you came back, the entire thing could be ruined. Maybe, the, maybe it's time the System Foundation just stopped. The Elven Kingdoms won't last against what they're trying to do. Uh, well, I think uh, the Elven Kingdom will survive just fine after we've dealt with them. Uh, returning to another point that we had, you said there were two reasons. There were two, uh, what were the objectives for the Shadow Seed things? Yes. The second of which creates a illusory form of the individual, allowing them to move around and do what needs to be done allowing them to go from A to B, completing objectives. The idea being you use it, you use the seed on a scout or otherwise a assassin or spy, and should they get discovered and die, they can continue their missions in a illusory form of themselves until eventually they get killed or the duration runs out. That is its intention. Your mother and father, looking back at Queglod, made some adjustments to it when they killed Elzion. <laughs> yes. Uh, what? Explosion to kill the Emperor? I don't know what it did, but if that's what it did, then yes. It's lucky before the Emperor, I died again. I wouldn't say lucky is the right word, but... Oh, don't worry, he got better. I can tell he's Thank you, sir. Back Thank you, dear. Now. When I, did, when I did hear of your death, just FYI, I was making preparations to attempt to bring you back, acquire funding for such a spell, but your colleague was more than capable. Uh, there's not, there, I'll be honest, wasn't much to bring me back. I was a pile of dust by all accounts. There are spells of legend which can do such, and... Mm, yes. You have one in your midst. Now... Here comes the hard part. You've been... I say, you've been far more reasonable than I expected. I have nothing Don't to expect... hide now. I knew this would come at some point. I was just hoping not so soon. But what do you, say... what do you think we should do next? What do you think the outcome of this should be? I think we should ask what the fuck be? was going on with Elzion's dreams. Oh, right, yes, thank you, Sasha. What the fuck was going on with my dreams? Why was I dreaming? And why was my mother there? That, like I explained, was my spell Nightmare Seed. The spell that I created to particularly keep you away from the Elven Kingdoms. If you feared your mother you and you found the simple solution, I'd never have to use it again. I'd only have to use it to try and keep tabs on you, dispel it when need be and let various things happen, try and keep myself a distance. I could keep an eye on you while also making sure that you didn't return to the Elven Kingdoms anytime soon or in good health, if, the de if it came to that. Well... I needed to keep you away. If you realized your mother and father were un un they were fine, they were completely of your they were brothers. completely okay. They didn't hate me and my father was still alive. That was a really nasty little little thing you dropped in there. I needed to. Oh, you needed to. Yes. To maintain you... the illusion. The keeping, taking care of your father was to make sure that he wasn't going to go peeking or saying anything else about this. I'll take care of my father. But you've had him killed. Killed? I understand that that was a misunderstanding and me looking too deeply into words, but that's what I believed. Now, here, we do have one problem. You have admitted to necromancy. Correct. I'm sure you're aware Indeed, of yes. Queglod. 
I am. I'm aware of what the wingless do. Now, you have We've been made nothing. no attempt to prevent this thus far. Or hide it. He's been, I'd say, fairly reasonable. I, okay, he has been very reasonable in this conversation. I would say this whole thing could have been sorted out if you just had a fucking sit down and a chat over a cup of tea. That is incredibly fair. You watch as he does pause. I will say, Sasha and Elzian, go ahead and make insight checks on this. Oh, please, I'll just be like, oh, shit, I could have done that. That is a 15. No, it's only a 16. He's hard to read, but as he does kind of pause, you watch as his glare does get slightly distant. There's something that he hasn't told you yet, you get the feeling. Something that he doesn't want to say. Hey, let's tell, me, tell us. It's not that simple. Say it as simply as you can. You need all the information. It's never going to be any more simple. Don't let this end with any regrets. It would be better if I didn't tell you at all. It might change your opinion on what you might do next. Oh, why? There's tell no, us. There's no stopping you from bringing back your mother's memories. What comes next? What does... Tell the us. The reason she doesn't have her psionic powers is because her memories have been sealed. Right? She, does, she doesn't know she's got psionics. Exactly. You bring her memories back, she's got psionics. <clears throat> she says anything. You, your mother, your father, and Kira, all of them will be killed. Your household, Farnsworth, all of the servants. All of them. Not we have enough just power in this one that. room to rend cities. Yes, but an elven kingdom going to war with the Empire because they seek refuge there over treason. When the Empire is already at war with a greater foe and something else lurks out there. We'll bring destruction. Oh, you're a bastard. What you're saying is that... They can't get their memories back. We can't let my mother at least have her memories back. My father already has his back. That's doable. But we can't... We can't let her have hers back for fear of what she might do. That's not all. If you want transparency, I'll tell you, but know that with the information I will give you, it it may yeah, change your opinion of your family entirely. My opinions of my family have been changing fairly rapidly recently. Another change won't really matter. When your mother lost her two eldest sons to the events that transpired. She tried to burn you, your father, and herself down in the house around her when she lost them. She tried to take you all out. I had to remove her memories. She was unaffected by Maldoras back when she was younger, but when she gained her powers of psionics, I fear that something snapped when she lost her sons. If she gains that back, she'll be every bit the nightmare that you remembered. Okay, right. Dude, this so could have been sold if you just had a sit down or a letter or something. Jesus. A letter right. with whom? With Elzion to bring him back while his psionics no. were still growing if he got no. found out? A letter Sasha's with... talking about a lot sooner. With who? His mother, the one who had proceeded to give authorization for her sons to receive psionic ability, then tried to kill herself and her family with her? No. With whom? Ravalas. If he realized it would have been for the death of our entire family... He knew. I warned I him he doesn't listen. Your eldest brother was an as arrogant as your father was. Okay. 
Your older brother was sent, you, had sense, the, and he knew what was right. You don't get to speak ill of them. Hmm. They're as much my family as they are yours. I'm aware. But... As much as we understand your reasoning, you are the one that decided to kill at least one of them. And the decided all decide. of this. Did you consult anyone, or did you just decide, you know what, I've got the power, I'll do it? Would you have preferred that I imprisoned him? That he be dying in a cell somewhere and being malnourished and fed, never seeing the light of day because that's what the Shadow Leaf would have done? Given him over to the Bloodbriar Courts where he would have been executed along with the rest of us and family? No. Would you have preferred that I try and convince him otherwise, which he was otherwise completely oblivious to, or try and wipe his memories, which have the chance of coming back? Well, you did it with everyone else. Yes, at great cost. You can tell he is angry with this. Good. So am I. He doesn't even need to make an insight check for that one. You know why we came here tonight. What our goals were for the end of this. Correct? If it is to kill me, then I will give you one warning before the end of this. To kill me will incite an investigation. If they dispel the effect on your mother, she will die, as will your father, as will your sister, and as will you. Live with the consequences if you wish to do this. Live with the consequences mm. I have lived with. Making a choice that was difficult. Killing your own nephew for the sake of trying to protect the rest of your living family. Using one of your nephews who was willing to take the plunge and dig his own dagger into his brother's throat to do the same. But I took the stead for you because I wanted to take the fall. I am the scapegoat for you when that happened. For who else? I, I ha one last insight, because I'm ahead. dearly hoping some fuckery's going on here, but I kind of know it. Wait, wait, see, natural 20. Okay. Sorry, I didn't ask for a total roll. of? Uh, natural 20, uh, the, the plus 5, so that's 34. A, a dirty 20, but that hardly matters. Okay. With the 34, you get the following feelings about this. With Sasha, you believe, as you kind of look at him, he's hard to read, but through his anger, it's difficult for him. As you're otherwise reading his emotions, Elzian, everything he has said, this entire conversation is true. He needs no glibness. He is saying the truth, and you are seeing it all. It all adds up. It all makes sense. And in the difficult scenario with the tools and kit that you had, everything went from bad to worse. And as you begin to piece it all together, the reason he had to wipe memories and use such powerful force is because thousands within the Elven Kingdom knew of her, of your mother's two sons. The effect and toll that this must have taken on him, you have no idea of what that would take, but with the access to the wish spell, you know that a toll like that would have taken hundreds of years from his lifespan. Right. Cracklord, I've got a favour to ask. I know I don't ask it lightly. I know it goes against everything that you're probably feeling about, my dear uncle here. Go on. I think you probably already know it. For the sake of my family, he needs to be left alive. But we can't just let him live here comfortably in his nice little mansion with his servants. What I suggest looking directly at, at into Delman's eyes with this. You leave the Elven Kingdom. You leave my family alone. You never come back. We never talk about you again. 
and we forget that either of us two ever existed. You become a footnote. The Psy Stem Foundation. It was the Psy Stem Foundation, wasn't it? Yes, the Psy yeah. Stem Foundation. It's a thing of the past. It's gone. Never coming back in any way, shape, or form. Do you know what comes next? Go on. You've been so enlightening already today. Do you know what powers Craiglod's parents have? We believe Craiglod's parents are our next step, aren't they? What happened? What Their happened? powers are great, but to our understanding, not insurmountable. And what about Killing the people them. that they um, work for? People of their stature, people of your own, who do you work for? You don't. You work for yourselves. You know this. If you wanted to, you stated to. You have the ability to shatter cities. You have that strength. But you don't follow anyone. You don't follow their every word and order. Yet they are people like myself. They too do the same. And only once I met their shadow did I truly know what they were trying to work for. Yeah. He looks around the room. Hey. I would like everyone to make me a deception check if you wish to hide the truth about knowing about Ringar. I, I should I even bother? <laughs> uh, are we, are we even uh, trying? Uh, Elgin's not even... They're not trying. Yeah, not not trying. Not he's been he, he's been honest with us, Elson, okay. and he's Phil. So he owes him yeah, that yeah, much. No, I'm not attempting that, that yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. I mean, very much a yes and situation. We know. That's stop number two, buddy. And yet, <sighs> you really think you can take them? All of them. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? If we don't, everyone loses. So we have to. We've been in this sort of situation before. <sighs> we can be in it again. You'll notice that we've survived this far. I know. As you yourself are no doubt familiar with, you can achieve great things when you have no alternative. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check, Quaglod. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. how it's bound to be, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a nine. Charisma who wants to kill you is, trying to, is talking. As much as I would Should agree with you, unfortunately, if I don't try to protect the Elven Kingdoms, they will be one of the first to die. How and you do? protect them here, hmm? and we'll deal with them, because that's what we do. Will you? We deal with the problems. Yes. How? Tell me, how, what is your plan? Kill it. Kill it? Kill, it. Kill what? Nothing. Kill who? Kill how many? However so many... Find takes. information. We find information, then we kill. We find more information, and we kill. So you come to me, explaining that you're going to be the ones to take care of this when you don't have a shred of an idea what you're up against. Hmm. We know vaguely what we're looking for. We can I do, do a good job at finding out information. Then why don't you enlighten also, me? You've been, you've been listening in on our adventures for a fucking skull. You know that we've done a lot more with a lot less... For, no real explainable reason. I know. And I also know that they've been doing the same, that they've slipped past your guard several times. Oh. No, we never said we were perfect. Exactly. We're working on tightening the net even as we speak. Well then. 
This, uh, it's a massive act of hubris to think that just your little, <laughs> little, just the Sa the Sistem Foundation is what will save the Elven Kingdom. What's the stuff? Psionics aren't that much more powerful than any other form of magic. Just a different source, a different form, and. I don't see how that can help. That can save everyone either. Aww. Yet you Your plan use psionics if you don't see its superiority. <laughs> it's not superior. How so? I have used psionics. You spent how much gold trying to bring about spells and magic to your book? How much of that did you need to spend to get your psionics? Nothing. How long did it take you to acquire that power that you have, as psionics grew with you? You had been adventuring for six months, and you were already the equivalent of an archmage. To a wizard, that would take hundreds of years for an elven wizard, or tens of years for those who specialize in something. We don't have that kind of time. Psionics is superior because of the speed at which it can be applied. The fact that you can make a warrior out of someone in a month or two. A standing army can be created if made well enough. True. It doesn't require the training of hundreds of years to bring them about. The warriors of our land won't stand a chance. Psionics sorry, is you, quick you, you... and easy for the equivalence of an archmage. Yes, Creatures it's quick and easy. The quick and easy way very rarely works. I know I've seen it, but what you're failing to see is that your project happens. Word will get out. It will. I'm not, if, if not through me, through someone else. Someone slips a slip of the tongue here. Uh, misplaced note there. And then what? And then your entire plan crumbles as you're having to fight against the thing that's far more powerful than any form of magic. No, I Fucking won't. Politics. Because if word gets out and they hunt you down and start a second war, then no one stands a chance. Then why that's... are you risking it? Because it is the only way. This is something that has been happening for beyond once I met your parents, Quaglod. This is something that has been happening for a long time. Something to overcome Maldoras. His extent still exists within the material plane, yet very few are so privileged to know of it. And the only reason I do is because I make sure that I cover my back everywhere I go. Elson's gonna... At this point, Elson's gonna stand up. Uncle, you're delusional. I was going to walk to the door to leave. Uh, I have a couple of questions for you, Chris. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen of, I'm guessing, what their kingdom's forces would potentially mostly be like. So, like, uh, house guards and rangers and stuff. Mm-hmm. What's the comparison between them and, say, uh, uh, the force of the Barrenlands? The Barrenlands in a one-on-one -on -one fight in an open field would slaughter the Elven Kingdoms. The Elven Kingdoms relies on home territory advantage and the ability to utilize forests to their utmost. The advantage of, as you're kind of gauging this with your level of military expertise kind of being brought in here, given the nature of understanding from the queen teaching you if they were to have something of that wasn't tied to the forest wasn't tied to specific natures you understand that if they had the equivalent of psionic troop then they could probably do they could probably change an entire battle in an open field against mm -hmm. the barren lands to make it an even fight and in home field advantage, where they have the upper hand, they'd slaughter the Baron Lads. You've only seen a small portion of Psionic, so you don't know the full potential. 
But if a troop that is entirely made up of magical folk, of highly skilled individuals, druids don't extend beyond maybe 5th or 6th level casting in the Barren Lands, with, the, with exceptions being higher-ups, elites, and then, obviously, the queen and her council. But they've trained for that, and most of them aren't even magical users. Only a few exceptions are, obviously, the queen being one of them. If someone as powerful as Elgin was when he was a psionic, could be made in the course of a month or two, it would change every war the Elven Kingdom ever goes into. Hmm. So what you're saying is, he's right. Seems that way. But you don't know no. his methods. Easy and quick, as Elgin has stated, is a diff is obviously a very dangerous road to go down, but sometimes the best solution is the simplest one. And to him, uh, this is something he's been doing for a long time. Malcolm is going to stand up. Mm -hmm. If you'll give me a minute, I need to speak with Elzian. And Malcolm is going to follow Elzian out. Okay. Two of you have left the room. Element. What? Say this is the quick and easy way. Has this been quick, easy for you? No. Two psionics dead. One turned to a caster. Your own sister has no powers as they've been locked away. I regret to say that I somewhat understand your reasoning. Sometimes when something isn't working, you have to try a different approach. Have you ever been in the field Thank of you research? For the weapon gift. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in the field of research? I've researched multiple things in my time. But have you ever crafting. worked on a project which people have always turned down, perhaps? Something which people say will never work, or something that can't be allowed to happen? Every time I try, every time people say that it shouldn't happen, that it shouldn't be a thing, that it won't succeed. Every time, and I have proved on the number of successful occasions that it does work. Just needs to be refined. Like the creating of any spell, it takes time. Time that I have been speeding up, ones that I've worked on for a long time now. It's been 400 years since the atrocities, 400 years of me trying this and getting it to work. It's refining and it's working. Hundreds Your of households. family has died because of it. Don't think I don't know that. I said, unfortunately, I do understand. But, fuck, you have... If you were more willing to talk, to explain, to reason with people rather than taking the moral high ground, believing yourself to be the end-all and be-all. I'm not. I am what? the scapegoat, remember? My intention is to die by Elzian's hand. He will take my life, and when that happens, he will obtain the psionic nature of what is inherited. He is to end my life. I prepared for this. Since he was a child. Since the powers of Rovelus and Thalus. Since they stagnated. Since Thalus was excelling but then saw too much and through his own greed sought out more power. When Rovelus stagnated and saw his own wrath and rage within him that he wished to bring down the entire household. Where Elzion wished to help and be a kind person. To the entire party starts laughing. Sorry. Sorry. I, I mean, stood is he wrong? 
I stood up for him. He will kill me and obtain my power. That is my intention. And if I don't die, then I will make it happen. What exactly is your plan now, then? I am not leaving the Elven Kingdoms. The size, either the sty stem come back or I die by Elzion's hands. The Shadow know what to do. They know to have me die in a particular manner. They already have their orders once Elzion kills me. But I need him to know that if something goes wrong and his mother ends up on the plate for the Elven Kingdoms because she won't leave, then he'll be killing his little sister, mother, and father. This is what I'm concerned about. Because we can't stay here all the time to make sure his family is safe. No. We can't Whereas take them I've with us. Whereas I've been doing it for 400 years. Ever since that day, I've taken care of Elzin's mother. My sister, I've taken care of her. The atrocities took their toll, but I was skilled enough to preserve against it. If he wishes to obtain his powers back, to truly understand them, I can teach them to him easily. I can open his mind. And I can release the truth back to the Elven Kingdoms. Elzion's mother is working with me to reveal the Psystem Foundation slowly but surely. Forms of psionic research that are otherwise proving useful and helpful. She's already doing this. She's optionally putting her life on the line despite me saying otherwise. She's chosen this path to take. And you watch as the other way is kind of buries his head in his hands for a moment. Elzion and Malcolm, you're outside in the hallway at this point. The door closed behind you. Mm. Elzion's just in, standing in the uh, the hallway, just leaning against leaning against the wall, just kind of waiting for the others. Okay. Malcolm leaves, yeah. kind of closing the door behind him. Mm. Well... Things definitely didn't go as expected in there. Nope, we expected a big battle, large blasts, heroic speeches, and the death of a villain. Why can't I just be that... You know, why can't my family just be that simple? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, I honestly can't answer that. I didn't Everything expect you to. complicated now. I'm kind of confused about a lot of things that are going on currently. Okay. But there's one thing that I'm not confused about. Mm -hmm. What he was saying, from what I can gather, he's got, he's came up with a good option. Look, I... It's, it, He's not delusional about it. I... I... Wanna know the worst thing? You're right, he's not. That's the worst fucking part of it. He's not completely delusional. We could do great with a few... With just a few... Fucking... Mystics around. Yeah... There's also something else that... You should know, and that he should probably know as well. Mm -hmm. We've already let it slip a little bit about psionics. I know. I know. <sighs> so, fucked anyway. Not messed up. You're not there. there. You're not there. I don't know for sure, but. I know that if we are to keep this from getting too far out of hand in that regard, he needs to know at least. He's been doing this for a long time. 
Maybe I'll have to cover it up somehow. Oh. Maybe. Uh, fucking mask. The, the mask. That's funny. Uh. Go ahead and run me a D100. Oh. Uh, uh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> A chair just disappeared from the wedding. Um, <laughs> 23. 23. As you say those words, you feel an ominous presence fill the back of your head. And Malcolm, you feel the same presence. <laughs> As you say that, you almost feel this strange... almost darkness within this area. Uh, uh, uh. Oh shit! What's happening? What? Back in the main room. As this conversation outside is happening, the rest of you feel, all of you, feel this strange, almost creeping ice sensation run down the back of your head. Yeah. As you watch as... He otherwise peels his hands away from his face. He looks up with almost a moment of shock as he is going to as he begins moving towards the door. Do any of you stop him? Um The emotion of what he seems to be looking at is panic more than anything else. I will stop him. What's going I, on? I, I can I make the the choice to try and stop Rook from stopping him? I will say both of you go ahead and make athletics checks. The one with the higher will be the outcome winner of this. Because two people grappling him with his minus one to strength is he's not going to win. So it's no. between the two of you. Okay. Well, he might help me stop Rook. So that is 19. He's focused on other things at the moment. Oh, shit. No, fuck. I got no. nothing. As Rook otherwise kind of wraps his hand around him, kind of stopping him from leaving in almost an emergence of like thinking he might be trying to make a break for it. You stop him in place. What's going on? He, you see his eyes are kind of wide. Something's not right. Uh, how so? Le that sensation shouldn't have happened. What does it mean? He pauses as he otherwise turns and looks at you, Quaglord. There's almost this moment of unknowing before he kind of thinks for a moment, clarifying his thoughts. He looks around kind of the interior and you watch as his eyes do flash with an arcane glow as you kind of follow suit looking around the interior of this. You watch as there is this flow of energy as it all begins to flood towards the central hallway. Oh no. Great. The magic's breaking. Magic? It's not safe anymore. What, in the Elven Kingdoms or in here or...? Both. Mm, okay. Uh-oh. Elvian. In the hallway, what? you hear this tearing sound. As you two are standing there, otherwise hearing, kind of what, feeling this feeling, you watch, as from underneath the stairway, you watch as this tear, almost this black seam appears, and you watch as portions of it begin to tear apart from left to right. As you watch as this almost chaotic dark black and purple mist spills out into the hallway below and you watch as a form writhes out you see this large almost lamprey leech like form massive tendrils writhing off of the exterior of where the main head would be for the massive serpent and you see these large hooked tendrils from the mouth i would like you to all roll initiative please Yay. As this thing enters the hallway. Uh, oh, fuck me, I know what that is. Yeah. 
So do I. <laughs> oh boy. Well, now oh. we know we know how he makes psionics. Fucking illithids. Um. <laughs> you got time, time to uh, time to wiretap our boy Abolith. <laughs> Get his ass over here. We have knock, a prisoner knock, for him. We've got knock knock. We've got an aberration for you. So, damn it, we should have invited him to the wedding after all. <laughs> I knew, I knew we were forgetting someone. Uh, Honestly, no, no, I did ask Chris about the Avalith, but let's face it, the Avalith has enough to take care of. Ooh. We oh. should have invited anyway to see what gift we got. Some eldritch abomination turns up to the wedding. It sends you a prisoner. <laughs> Just an Illithid turns up, like, hi, I'm forced to be your manservant for ever now? Hey guys, we've got a psionic in the party again. Yay! Hooray! Uh, we've also got your, your uncle as well, so that's, that's so, too psionic. 25 to 20. Uh, that would be me with, I believe, a 22? 22! 22. 22 for Quagrad as well. Ooh, nice. What's the dex? Uh, 16, I believe. 16! You Fuck. can choose. I will I'm happy choose. to let you go first if you would like. I need to roll uh, I, I would like to go first, yes. Delman yes. and the monstrosity. Right. Or aberration would be the more correct term to use here. Yeah, the, when there's tentacles involved and it's not an octopus, it's... It's an aberration. Aberration. Let me quickly check what this thing's stats are. Beings from oh, pretty much from all points in time, because oh aberrations okay. are weird. Okay, 20 to 15. Uh, uh, 19. 15 to 10. 10 to 5. Uh, 6. Sasha? Uh, 8. Okay. I was just... Rook, what was yours? What's what? Your initiative. Initiative. Oh! <laughs> 20. Okay. I totally knew that. Okay. Elzion, as you stand in the hallway, you watch as this tear forms and this almost large leech-like creature appears through the uh, through the uh, tear in this space. Otherwise appears, you watch as becoming visible, you watch as these nodes appear around, all around and are now encircling this new intruder. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Fire! Fire will work! Fire will work? Fire will work! What are you doing? Fire. Why am I on 92 health? Because you haven't taken a short or long rest yet. Any damage you took is damage you've taken. Uh, actually has been under the effects... Uh, no way, I didn't use regenerate in the end. I used um, heal. You used heal so, because yeah, regenerate has a minute mm. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. Well... Hey, Bird, how you doing? I'm a baby. Right. Baby. <laughs> He's fucking terribly turned into a baby. Baby. Um, I'm low on spell slots. That's you, sad. however, have a burn with no weapons, so... For <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> sake. This is going to be an interesting I only fight. have spells. It's going to be interesting well, fight. Delman's quite high up there, but you guys might not let him cast a spell depending. So, if you guys decide I, to be mean to him. Am I the only one that's gone in full health and used absolutely nothing? Malcolm, oh, I mean, to have, a degree as well. I've used a few spell slots, but I'm doing pretty good. I have some I've of only my used spell two spell slots, but I only have four. Uh, Simon, mm -hmm. we may have to make use of Plan Omega to get this thing out of here. What's Plan Omega? It's one we of the it. bullshit things we discussed. One of those won't really work. Well, either um, way, it's Elzian's turn. Uh, right, yes. Uh, I'm going to cast Mirror Image. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. Many Elzians. Okay. There are many Elzians who are under the effect of Mirror Image. Uh, clarify, Sly. I don't need the your part of Plan Omega. I just need to do my yes. part underneath it. Right. <laughs> I'm going to cast uh, that, and then um, it's not—it's not concentration. Wonderful. Nope. And then I'm going to move over here to the door. Okay. Shall... Guys, we're fucked. 
tentacled <laughs> bastard. Here. Gunkel, what the fuck do you have locked away in your house? Okay. Uh, Quagwell, As... you hear this shout. Oh, were you doing anything else, sorry? Uh, no, 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 I was just double checking. I okay. can't do anything else. Okay. Quagwell? You hear this shout and you kind of see the panic in Delman's eyes. Or you saw it as he moved past you, I should say. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm gonna first move over here and make sure I've got a good look the at this The door thing. is closed currently. Yeah. So, 5, 10, 15. 20 over here. Can I open the door? Mm-hmm. You can spend either a bonus action to open the door, which will then mean you just pull it open, then you can go from there. Or you can spend an action to just pull the door open fully, and it won't have any, like, swinging or anything. Uh, okay. I don't actually know what I'm going to need, because I... Mm, bonus action. Okay, bonus action, you pull the door open. It, swing, uh, it swings open, and otherwise stays open. Okay. Okay. Uh, now that I can see this thing, I assume there's no illusions affecting it, or... Looking out into the hallway, with the detect magic that you have, you can see all of the orbs have suddenly faced this thing, and are beginning to charge up the magical spells. Looking at it, Good you can see know. this thing is otherwise wreathed in some layer of anti-magic. <sighs> We're going to be requiring a rook soon. <laughs> Okay. That is what you pick up from it. As you otherwise look at it, it kind of has this strange, almost unknown, almost static effect. You don't know what this thing is. As players, some of you may recognize this and know what this thing I is. I recognize oh, the uh, Out of character, none of you know what this is. Well, it doesn't matter if you know the stat block, because this isn't that exact thing. Uh, it's been buffed. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> We've been Fucked. Super buff. Oh, it doesn't need that oh, yeah. much buff. You remember that comment I meant earlier where I was like, that's a lot of health? And I was like, oh yeah, well the base stat yeah. buff is a lot. Yeah. Stupid health bullshit, man. Good luck. This is genuinely a dangerous encounter, even if it was just the normal one. I don't recognize it, I'm afraid, so. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> ah, the two players who don't no know idea. what this thing is. Good. I have no idea what this thing is either, but, uh, I don't I like know it. What it is. Infernal uh, knows what it is and knows that this thing is very dangerous. El Sam knows what this thing is because this is the one thing that could have killed Elzy and easy peasy when the campaign began. Oh god! Like, like I, I'm trying to. Ra Lots of things could have could have killed Elzy and easy peasy when this, this campaign true. began. This is the thing you were going to could have killed Elzy when this campaign began. This is what I was going to be. Hmm. You were going to use this thing in the ruined ship. You were going to do right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm racking my brain trying to figure it out, and a part of me wants to go look it okay. up, but no. no. So, quite well, well, this anything else you wish like is an apple left, but I'm pretty sure that's not what this actually is. Nope. Yeah. yeah. It's an illicit bullshit. This is what happens when an illicit doesn't become an illicit and instead decides to be worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you've opened the door as your bonus action. You see this thing as it otherwise enters into the hallway and you watch as its mouth begins to open as it peels back these four kind of hook-like areas, exposing the, to the toothy maw underneath as the tendrils that barbed shoot out from the, uh, in the cavity of its mouth. Wonderful. Okay. I'm... Going to cast. Uh, better get. Better make sure I get some use out of any spells I cast. So I'm going to cast spiritual weapon. Okay. I have that somewhere around here. You want to go ahead and make the attack roll while I figure out where it is. There it is. Yeah. I will. Placing it as well. Where sure would you like to place it? Right. You currently have with this thing's height. 
it is just mm -hmm. about able to kind of be in this room, in this space, but it is beginning to break into the balcony above. Okay. Do I have any visibility on that balcony? Uh, no, because the way the balcony is orientated is the balcony is up on this side. So this okay. is just a large wall that you'd be looking at. Is its head down here? It, its head's fairly feasible on where it can go, but it, where it lifts its head up, it breaks into the top of the balcony before it. But it's currently its head is lowered. Its head is lowered yeah. into this area, yeah. I'll probably just try and place the spiritual weapon up as high as I can actually see then. It's sad. Because... I'm just measuring. One measuring it'll be this size. Way, that would be useful. It'll be uh, that one. It's young. Yeah, this side. Then what's... Oh, yeah, that's right. That's a doll. That's a doll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine then. Okay. I just wanted to double check. What was your to hit? I mean, it's 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 plus 13, so it's an 18, but that's still... That hits. Do it. Ah. That hits. You watch as your, as you otherwise kind of cast your hand out, the scythe-like raven's um, blade otherwise appears as it takes a swing. Its hide isn't that tough. Ah, no. that's what it is. I should I'm on, I'm on the wiki, not that, looking at stats, but... I promise. I should be happy about the fact that that works, but now I'm more confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 11 plus your charisma mod, so that should be 16. Okay. As it, otherwise, as it otherwise cuts into it, you watch as the blade slices through a portion of the flesh, and you watch as the flesh almost begins to sew itself back together. Hmm. The nature of it not having a tough hide seems to be that it's just bulky. But the tide hide doesn't seem necessarily squishy either. Your blades are just that good. Okay. Have a regenerator effect? You're you can't see from this angle, and you can't gauge whether it be a regenerative effect or something else. But it it's it's tough in some in some regards. Yes, way. it can it can take a hit and keep going. Yep, exactly. Okay, we've not a lot left to do on my turn. I mean, it's a health tank, away. not a defense tank. It's a blissy, not a shuckle. <laughs> That's a good analogy. So, you and move... And it may or may not be cast away. Away. things not spoiled. So you move back out of the way. Good to know. Dalman, what's... Any advice you want to give, now would be the time. Uh, can he see it from this angle? Because it's just coming in. Okay, that's a natural 20 on his part. Yeah. You watch what as do his, your elf eyes see? As you do kind of turn to him, oh, you watch as his breathing does stop for a moment. So as his eyes kind of do panic as you watch as he does, like, begin to almost shake. You get a sense that this is not of his doing. Any comments that this might be what he's working with? It's what he's working against. So, oh, happy day. Well, that's with, that, with that being over, Rook, it is your turn. Ah. You are going at the same time as the lair, however, the lair goes second. Yeah. And Elven the lair woodworm. Is on your side. That's all I can implement here. It's Elven woodworm. Yeah, you look through. It is yeah. a big Elven woodworm. No wonder the trees are so big here. You want to get the pest patrol out to sit with this? Ooh, we boy. could probably deal with this one. <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to go out there. <laughs> Rook, oh no! Go. It may eat your intelligence away, but that's fine. You'll only die. Oh. Just, okay. As you're going towards it, to make sure you get there, just imagine there's spiders behind you. I can make spiders behind him. Oh uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> you people are all monsters. All right. Well, I mean, Rook's Rook no Zemtor out there. Yeah. Rook becomes his own group. He's like, nope, nope, that's it. I'm killing everyone. <laughs> okay, I am gonna go. Yeah, I don't really have much else to do here. I'm going out. Uh, 10, in 20, 25, 30. 30, 35 is too much movement I've got. Yeah, okay, cool. Excellent. So I'm clear of the door so people can get out. And I am just going to swing at it, I go, guess. Go Question ahead. mark. Go ahead. Okay. Three swings. Okay. Um, 
Nope, that's Gabby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Picks up Gabby. Swing. No. <laughs> I swing my griffin. Oof. Ooh. Okay. Oh, okay. Those two hit. That is a crit. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the natural one rules aren't taking effect till campaign two. They were just me no. showing them off to you and giving them a try. Right. For those of you who are interested, natural one in campaign going two to... is going to cause an opportunity fact, attack against you to proc. I'm going to remember this, finally. Actually remember that. Because my hit hit, I'm going to activate favoured foe. Is that? Uh, yes. It'll be on your first attack, so that'll be this lot of damage first. Okay, cool. So that means that it is then marked with an additional d4, which will then crit. Uh. And you may be real ones and twos if you wish to be real this one. All right, yes. Cool. So your first hit does eight plus how much damage? Nine. Eight plus nine. So seventeen yep. points of damage. Okay, good first hit. Okay, and the second hit, which is a crit, does twenty-seven. Plus nine for 36 damage. Okay. okay, I am going to action surge. Go ahead. And bonus attack connects. Uh, so four attacks, sword. go ahead. All of them hit. Huh. What's this Ooh. plus to hit? Uh, plus 15. Yeah, it hits. Okay, right. So this is a D4 it's been so long since we've on... had someone who can hit this easily. Uh... Is that a D4 on all of them, or the first one hit? I always forget with Favoured Foe. Uh, favoured Foe, you haven't actually written... Oh no! Where's my Tasha's book? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Favoured Foe. Pages. That's right. Did they add it to Tasha's, or was it just from the UA, that one still? I, I think forget. it was Tasha's. I think it updated it, because it was originally Hunter's Mark. Yeah. It changed to Favoured Foe. Uh, favored foe. The first time on each of your turns that you hit the favored foe and deal damage to it, including when you mark it, you can increase the damage by 1d4. Okay, so for, it's only on the first hit, and it would have also procced on that first hit rather than the crit, but I'll take the damage still because I've already done it. Okay. Right. So that is four hits, so go ahead and roll me the lot the 8d6 plus 36. Rerolling ones and twos. Rerolling ones and twos. That's a lot of rerolling. These two. God, I think we rolled into two ones. Oh, eh? They really on. don't like you. Uh, could be worse. Could be rolling disadvantage on your initiative and still getting poor advantage on your initiative and getting two natural twos as Delman. Oof. Oof. Oh, Delman. He has the alert feet. Didn't go too well for him. Rip Delman. There's right. alerts, and then there's whatever the fuck Delmond is. Yeah. Yes. So that's 61 points of slashing damage. Okay. okay. Now, if he was a rogue, he would have had a 17 there. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so, as you, as you otherwise slice into this thing, taking your axe, you carve away at large chunks of it, doing a hefty portion of damage, over 100 this turn. It's looking pretty good still. As your axe carves away chunks of flesh as it otherwise falls to the floor, you watch as they almost begin to link back up and pull itself back up into the edge of this thing as it sews itself back together. It otherwise looks down at you as this happens. The lair will now take its turn. Chris, can I make a request? You never make that noise again. Yeah. This thing has a lot of tentacle attacks. That will not be happening. Oh... <laughs> Yeah, by the way, do we have our reaction or no? Uh, at this instance, all of you in the room would, I'd say you don't have your reaction and you're just entering the turn. This is pseudo surprise because you heard of something happening. You were made aware. But in this instance, you wouldn't necessarily be able to we'll react to it. No, okay. because much like how it's just entering the area, it can't do any of its legendary actions yet. So I've got my reaction back now, though. You have your reaction back now, though, yes. Cool. Okay. okay. Um... Okay, the lair is going to take its turn. The lair is going to try and use... It is going to try and force it to make a charisma saving throws. It's going to try to use containment field. What? Whose lair is this? Uh, this is Delman's lair. Okay. As the orbs are going to try and oh, use... Oh, no, 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 no. The containment field is on your side and it's going to and it tries to contain this thing, but it succeeds on its charisma save, as it is quite good at its charisma save. 
Um, I as, you know that, but as, this, that. as you watch right. this, oh, otherwise well, electric, almost this electric force begins to wrap around it, but you watch it otherwise kind of shrieks, peels its head back, and you watch as the electric field breaks and shatters, otherwise taking no effect. Okay, mm. end of the lair's turn. We have Malcolm, it is your turn. Uh, hey, Malcolm's up. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I guess we'll start this off, right? Uh, uh, Guardian of Major. Okay. Great tree, like normal now. Okay. That is a concentration spell, correct? Yes, it is. Go ahead and roll a d20 then, please. A d20. Well, I'm going to lose it immediately. You, uh, what level is uh, Great Tree? Uh, fourth. Okay. You just succeed as you cast the spell. You watch as the uh, as one of the orbs flickers. There's this electric static, but you manage to maintain concentration on the casting of your spell. Stop it. Bad orb. Those are just us as well. They will affect you until Delmon orders otherwise, but you know that Delmon can't order them. They're part of the natural defense here. Are they only in the hallway, or is it... They're only in the hallway until the doorway is opened. And now the doorway is opened, so they have partially flooded this room. However, Elgin was able to cast Mirror Image. You get the general sense it's concentration spells only. That's the problem. When to only cast concentration spells. It's the same with me. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Well, that's... So you are currently concentrate. So you are currently concentrating on Great Tree. That's your action? Yeah. Yep, um, uh, no, that's my bonus action. That's your bonus action, sorry. Uh, action, I guess I'm just gonna, uh, cast Firebolt on this thing. Go ahead and make me an attack roll. Firebolt. Firebolt, wow. This uses your charisma. Oh, very low AC. Yep, it Boy. does indeed use my charisma. So that is a... Uh, plus eight. So 17, just hits. Woo! Okay, so uh, AC is not that high. No, AC is not that high. And now your 17th level, that should be, I don't think we've updated it, but it should be 4d10. 4? Okay. Yeah, 4d10. Yeah, it should upgrade, yeah. Yeah, because you're 17th level now, so. Actually, no, it's total level because this is your racial, not your cantrips. That is 18 fire damage. Okay. Yeah, it's 4d10. Yeah, scaling is uh, level based. So. Yeah. Total. Yeah, as you otherwise, uh, as you otherwise, kind of release your hand outwards with the kind of great tree and the roots beginning to dig into the nearby woodwork, you fire out a firebolt at it as it streaks up, hitting the side of its flesh. You watch as it begins to slightly singe the side of it, as bits of it begin to almost bubble away and fall to the ground before the sewing begins to take place. Okay. I just uh, I can see Delman from here, right? Uh, you can just about see Delman from here. He is looking panicked. I look at him and I just ask real quick, it's okay if I break some things, right? He nervously nods. He seems so. to care little about the fact that his house is potentially in danger and more about the fact that this Good is to know. <laughs> Okay, right. is that the end of your turn? Uh, I will back away one. I don't think much That'll be your turn. Okay. It is now its turn. Is it your That's no new work. I have no counter to help with this, whatever it does. On its turn, you watch as it otherwise kind of rears back its head with all the pain, and you watch as the as it otherwise looks down at Rook. Uh, -huh. uh Rook, make me an intelligent saving throw, please. Oh fuck. Can I counter spell this? It seems to be a spell effect of some form of psionics. What level are you countering at? Okay. Psionics. I know there's bullshit with Psionics. Let's... What spells lots have I got? By the way, Rook, what's your intelligence save? One. Okay, then. So, this is going to be a fifth level uh, counter spell. Okay. Go ahead and roll and add your intelligence modifier to it. I know what he's casting. That's the worst part. Because it's yep. the only thing I remember about this thing. Damn. Damn, fifth level not... 
Dang, I, was, what is set to the heart? Believe it's an eight level spell he's casting, Chris. That is correct. Okay, fine. That, that fails. fails. Uh, that fails. Rook, go ahead and roll me an intelligence saving throw, please. Oh, you, got you got this, Rook. That's one. I want to know the L Can I? Oh, hang on one sec. Give me a minute. My reaction. Okay. I'm going to use my reaction to activate Dusty Rune and give me plus two against magic saves. Is it plus two or advantage? It's plus two. It says give plus two to magic saves. Or saves against magic. So that takes it to 20. That takes it to 20. Okay. You succeed on the Feeble Mind spell it just cast on you. <laughs> which, would have taken, which would have taken your intelligence and your charisma to one. I and you would have, and you would have reverted to primal instinct. This means that you would have been able to, you won't been able to cast spells, and your features are only martial. Oh, what a great change! No, but what it would have meant is it would have meant that effectively any of his range us. of stuff he wouldn't have had anything. No, you still perceive friend know. and foe, but it means he can't talk or perceive orders. Can't talk or like which means like that him. if Delman was your enemy when going into this, which he still technically is, Rook might still attack him if he was hit by a feeble mind. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, no. That's, what, that's the only reason I asked. Okay, if we have that an is action. its action. It is then going to spend its bonus action to use one of its tentacle barbs, and it is uh -oh. going, and it is going to use its tentacle barb against Malcolm because Malcolm is currently being affected by a concentration spell. That is a twenty-nine to hit. I mean, oh. you yes. know that hit. Okay. That is a total of uh, 15 points of piercing damage. As you watch as one of the kind of the smaller tendrils otherwise lashes out towards you, striking and cutting against the surface of your skin. Go ahead and make me a concentration check with disadvantage, as it does have the effect of Mage Slayer. However, if you have Warcaster, it is with advantage. I don't thought it would be a flat. Oh, hit the wrong button. You maintain concentration. However, you watch as the ten as the tentacle barb otherwise lashes across your front. You kind of place your hand against it, kind of to apply a little bit of pressure, and you watch as it still begins to bleed. You are now affected by one wound. I will tell you what that does at the beginning of your next turn. Yeah. Uh, 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 it row. then, as its movement is going to. It's going to remain there. It's got no reason to move. It's got plenty of targets. End of its turn. Sasha. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am going to be coming in. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five. No, I, I, I feel like it's... I'm Sash. I should be the one taking the hits, you know? Um, God, you've no idea how tempted I am to just try and blast this fucker to shit. Um, uh, but I am going to be calm, I'm going to be collected, and I'm going to cast Holy Weapon on my boy Rook. Okay. That is a concentration spell. Go ahead and roll me a d20, please. Uh, do I, because this is technically messing with my concentration, does this, do I roll with advantage, or is this just... A um, yes, this will actually work with your advantage here. Eh. What's the DC, by the way? That is fine. Doesn't matter. It does not fucking no. matter. No. <laughs> However, the nature of the magic that it's affecting is working the same as to spell magic, except you're the one rolling, not me. Okay. Because, effectively, it's reverse to spell magic. Just I'm having fair, you roll fair. instead. Thank you, Nat 20. Mm. Uh, so, uh, in this instance, so... you otherwise kind of maintain concentration. You place your hand upon Rook's uh, half blade as it glows with this bright white light in this space as you watch as bits of flame begin to flicker across the edge of it. Yep, so that's an extra 2d8 radiant damage on each hit. On each hit, yeah. 2d8, right, okay. How long does a minute last? Just out 10 rounds. Okay, cool. So and, I've got 10 rounds of... Yep, and you're also two. concentrating. And I believe I still have my action at play, don't I? Correct. Um, 
Fourth storm, I get to hit something with you for the first time. Go ahead. Hopefully. Um, just checking my exacts of that. So that's uh, plus 13 to hit. Pretty decent. I mean, could be better, but pretty decent. Okay. Uh, 20. Does a 20 hit? 20 does hit. So 1d8 uh, plus... Plus uh, the seven, seven plus, uh, plus divine, divine strikes. strikes, which I believe at this level is two d eight additional fire damage. So two d eight, so three d eight plus seven is what we're looking at, and um, might as well make all of it fire damage. Okay. Uh, is that? I I don't know if this thing will have any resistances or anything. You but didn't I might see as well. the firebolt, but for the sake of either metagaming or either way, it has no resistances to it. So, 11, so plus 11 plus 7, 18 points of fire damage. Good, good. So, if I just do that and heal it by 3, that's the easier way. Well, heal it by... Was it 17 or 18? 18. 18. Okay, so heal it by 2, not 3. There we go. Just do 20 damage and heal it by 2. So, as you otherwise kind of place your hand against Rook's weapon and then swing up with Forge Storm, the crack of the heavy lava infused weapon strikes against the fle uh, its flesh as it begins to otherwise boil and burn away crackling up the edge of it still looking pretty healthy okay is that the end of your turn uh that's all i got for now okay first of its legendary actions it is going to use a lash as it's going to make two tentacle barb attacks one against sasha one against malcolm mm -hmm. okay Malcolm, that is again another 29 to hit. Sasha, that is only a 23 to hit. Which I believe, because of no. your increased AC, misses. Clink, clink, it's my wedding day, bitch. That is true. Shit, we need to remember the plus two. Uh, Malcolm, you take 12 points of piercing damage, and you are afflicted with a second wound. Go ahead and roll me a concentration like check with disadvantage. Yeah, we got to fix that soon. I... Uh, Chris, does he get an armor save? <laughs> he doesn't have an invon save. Oh it's minus God. five AP. Uh, minus five AP. Oh fuck. AP obviously stands for arcane points, so you know minus five spell slots. <laughs> Wait, no. No. Uh, concentration wise, you are still fine. DC is still ten because it's not doing that much damage. It's rolling low. So uh, that is the first of its legendary actions used. Next in the initiative order, we have burn. You see this thing from around the edge. Do I have any idea on what it is? No. None. You saw it cast a nasty spell towards Rook, and you watch as Rook shrugged it off as this cloud of dust kind of poofed out from him, distorting the magic and causing it to miss. Okay. Non-concentration <laughs> spells. Let's see. Meteor Swarm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Damn it, didn't yeah. my disgust get broke? Yeah, yeah but all of you are also yeah. within the radiance, and I have legendary <laughs> resistances, so <laughs> it can only end well. I mean, that's still the equivalent of 40 d6. No, sorry, 20 d6 damage. This that's still true. a lot of damage. This is true. Yeah, this is where a problem occurs, where I have no fucking damage in spells on this. So I will use a 5th level uh, wisdom saving throw, Chris. Uh, against this thing? Yes. Uh, what spell are you casting in particular? Do I have to tell you? Actually, this thing doesn't... <laughs> th actually, that's the correct point. This thing doesn't have necessarily the intelligence to understand it. Wait, it doesn't have intelligence? No. Oh. This is... Thank you. Yeah, this doesn't have... This doesn't have intelligence. Um, as... Because... As much as this thing is a killer of psionics, it also dies to psionics quite a lot. Okay. Um, as this thing is going to use its, uh, it's going to use its reaction here. Yeah, it's going to use, it, it's, going to use its, it's going to use its reaction here to use distort magic. Uh, go ahead and roll me a d twenty, please. Uh, do I have? Dude, is oh. it just funny? This is a d20, and I will tell you for your sake so you don't use lucky to re-roll it and make it worse. 11 and higher is bad. Oh. 
Can I use lucky to make it lower? <laughs> yeah, you can. Because remember, you can take either roll. The point is that I'm letting you know this now before you go, oh, that 18's fine. Motherfucker. Okay. As the distort magic fails to take effect, you do not reflect the spell onto yourself. It makes a wisdom yeah, saving throw, correct? Yeah, I assumed that was going to happen when I heard the distort magic. This is a I... wisdom saving throw, correct? Yes. Okay. Magic resistance. Here we come. It's a heightened spell, though. I was just about to say. Oh, it, but oh. okay. Well, I'll take oh. the left of those two dice. Um, oh. What is your DC? 23. That fails. It's going to use its legendary resistance to succeed. It was a cold monster. Understandable. Understandable. Ah, okay. Oh, that would have been fun on you. Mm. Paralyzed yourself with your own yeah, concentration that spell. That could happen. <laughs> oh, that would have been fun. Okay. Uh, actually, that's also idea. that's also a concentration spell, so you should have rolled beforehand to see if it actually mm, takes place. Yeah. Should I? Um, um, I'll say, also, given the effect didn't go off I, and this I thing did, uses its reaction first. Though. Though. Hmm? On this. I could take work tested on this. As the last one. Oh, uh, that's fine. Either way, it wouldn't... Either way, this thing tried to use it to stop magic and your thing didn't work, so it's fine. The dispel magic effect wouldn't matter in the end. Well, I have no weapons on this character, so I can't really do shit. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna... Mm. Okay. Sit on the couch. I'm gonna sit, sit on the couch, yes. All right. You sit otherwise, you otherwise sit on the couch. As you otherwise lean back, you feel this kind of like harder object against the pillow as you remove it. It seems to have what looks to be a toy train next to it, <laughs> or toy ship. Sorry, trains don't exist in this world yet. Improvised weapon. <laughs> Improvised weapon. Oh, don't. In, in my, don't don't start that because I threw a, I, th I threw a bolt at the final. I threw a bolt with tavern brawler at the final boss. <laughs> It didn't Chris, work. you tried to throw bacon. Because <laughs> improvised weapon. Hey, if it works. What campaign was this? Oh. Curse of Strahd. That, that, yeah. <laughs> I sure, tried to throw bacon I mean, at the final boss to do 1d4 plus strength because I had no ranged weapons as a barbarian. <laughs> Fraser do, does a lot, did a lot to make that like very um... atmospheric, like get the horror stuff across. <laughs> and he did a really good job on it. Then we just involved pocket bacon somehow and ruined the entire tone with one sentence. Either way. And I felt, I felt bad for him, regularly way. and often. Yeah, that's your turn? Yeah, okay. I can't cast another spell, so yeah. and I have no weapons. Okay. It's going to use its second legendary action to use Lash. It is again going to target Malcolm and Sasha because you two are concentrating on spells. Yeah. Malcolm, mm -hmm. that is a 30 to hit you, and Sasha, that's that is fine. a 28 to hit you. Oh, it actually beats my AC. Well done. Malcolm, you take... God, I wish I was going to cast shield Ooh. just so I could be an asshole. Malcolm, you take 27 points of piercing damage. Go ahead and roll me a constitution saving throw for the uh, concentration. The DC is 13 because it is equal to half the damage. And again, with disadvantage because Mage Slayer. Sasha, that is as well to you. That is um, 27 points of piercing damage. Go ahead nice. and roll me a concentration check. It has Mage Slayer, so it would be with disadvantage, but you have Warcaster, so it's a flat roll. DC is 13 for each of you. I'm good. All good? Malcolm? I'm not. Okay, so your Great Tree fades. Fucking hell, oh, I hate this thing. I give up. I give up. I'm going okay. home. I'm done. Where's the nearest tree? I am out. Okay. We're in a world of woods. We don't need for trees. We're already in, probably in one. Right. This is 90% tree, this okay. country. Malcolm, you have three wounds. Sasha, you have one. I don't even know what it means. Oh, there's no the... save against that? Oh, shit. No, it's just flat. No, it wounds you. Get... Okay, this is going to sound weird. Can I do a medicine check to work out what the fuck That'll this That'll be on your is? turn, and that has a DC. That will cost me something, won't it? It will cost you an action to make it. Oh, I don't like this. I, I do not your like Talon. You'll find out what it does. <laughs> this is true. I mean, fair. Okay. Fair. End of Burns turn, it is Delman's turn. Uncle, Delman? Uncle, uncle, uncle. Uh, Delman is going to... Run away like a bitch. No, he's not. He needs this thing dead because his family's in the building. Yeah, he's going to stand here behind where oh, Quidlord is to get Good thing I didn't so. use Meteor Sword. <laughs> yeah, because you know, he has a two-year-old kid upstairs and a wife in bed. And this thing just showed up. 
have a cousin. Yeah, you do. Oh, that would have been awkward if Felsian had killed him. <laughs> Hi, Auntie. Uh, hey, little Timmy. That, you say that like we aren't very much capable of bringing people back to life. Okay, us. he is going to... That's why I have wish. He's already used that. He's already used his 7th level for glibness. He's got a ninth. And unfortunately, that spell's not really useful against anyone other than big crowds. So... Uh, has he got any good single target spells? <laughs> not ninth level magic missling. That's a bad idea. <laughs> okay. I think I know what he's going to do. Uh, he is going to... He's going to use some of his psionics. Because yay. Okay. It's good because this thing apparently doesn't have any Yeah. Do you watch as he is otherwise going to extend his hand, as he otherwise extends his uh, hand towards it. And you watch as Burn and Quagglod, you watch as he otherwise clenches his fist inwards. Um, and Quagglod, with your eyes currently seeing uh, magic, you watch as this almost spectral hammer appears above its head and cracks down on its surface. There's an intelligent saving throw. It has advantage because magic resistance. <sighs> but. Hmm? Nothing. Did you say the hammer's proficient? No. <laughs> okay. Well, that is a failure by that thing. It is going to spend its legendary resistance, one of its legendary resistances, to succeed on that. And he was cast that at ninth level. Okay, so that's the second of its legendary resistances down. As this thing is taking a full blown hammer of inquisition. Now, Elzion, you know what this thing does, don't you? Wait, he's only going to take half damage, don't he? It's going to take oh. half damage, yeah, yeah, but that's still 13d10 at ninth level. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hammer of Inquisition. Be best. Okay, to be quite fair, if, if, in an argument about whether Sionix would save the other kingdoms, if he just went to me and just went, Hammer of Inquisition, I'd be like, no, no, he's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good power. 33. Uh, 46. That's cocked. That was a 7 before it got knocked over. 46 is what I said last, so that takes that to 56. And one more d10. That is 66 points of psychic damage. Uh, as this thing will take half of that to take 33. It is bloodied. After 200 some points of damage, you watch as this thing otherwise kind of shakes with the psionic energy. As it otherwise shakes, you watch as each of the tendrils kind of lashes outwards, kind of striking, trying to find whatever it is. Um, but for some reason, where it's been kind of facing each of you as you cast magic, including you, Burn, it doesn't face him. Okay. Um, enraged, the creature is going to use its... The uh, last legendary action to use another lash. One against Sasha because she's concentrating, and one against Elzion because he has a spell effect on him. Actually, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have mirror image, so yeah, it would target you in this instance. Because Rook hasn't cast a spell yet. Right. Uh... The good news, of course, being you have mirror image. Yes. I got it. Oh, I... So, right. that is a... Roll... <laughs> that's a 17 to hit you. That's a very low roll. Right, I need that, to roll. Is it me or? No, that's against um, Elzion. Give me a second. You I need to do the roll for mirror two. image. Yeah, it's a plus two. Need to do the roll for mirror uh, image first. I need to get above that. It hits one of my Images. duplicates. My duplicate is 10 plus my dex mod. Um, so 13. So 13. So yeah, that hits. Okay, it slashes through one of the duplicates. No additional effect. <laughs> uh, as you did not take damage, you did not need to worry about any... Oh, it was concentration anyway. Uh, and Sasha, the hit versus you is a 31. Uh, that misses. Ah, I thought it did. That's why you're taking... Yeah, I know, um, I know. 15 points <laughs> of piercing damage and have a second wound. Oh, boy. Oh, wait. Is this magical piercing damage? Yes. Bollocks. Worth a try. Um, you said 15, yes? Correct. Just going to mark down that you have two wounds and Malcolm has three because there's nothing else I can do to wound you guys until it's turn again. So, 
that's the end of Delman's turn. Um, Elzion, back to the top of the round. Right then, moment is up. It's doing its job. That's fine. I can spend a couple more turns worrying about not worrying about getting hit. So, you know what? I haven't used it yet, and I feel bad for not using it because I always forget to use it. Um, I'm gonna pull a random spell, Chris. At what level? I have to use one of my spell slots, don't I? You do, yes, but it creates the random spell at the spell level that you made it. Nothing more. Okay. Like. Right. Uh, you know what? Let's go fifth. Okay. Uh, I roll a d100 to see what spell is created. Hold on to your butts, guys. The book of random spells. Uh, now so, like, I... sicken in radiance and... I, I do need to quickly check the description of uh, the tome, because this is obviously the first time you've used it, so I need to double check if it's... <laughs> okay. Twice per long rest, you may read through the pages of the book and expend a spell slot of a chosen level. As an action, uh, when you do so, you generate a random spell from among the wizard spell list of that level. Wizard spell the spell list. is cast and automatically fills out the cast time if appropriate to the spell. So, 5th level wizard spell lists. It helps if I don't actually just type in screaming into the description Six, box. Seven, oh, that's some good ones. 12, 13, 14. Let's, let's check the 5th level. 5th. Just... Wizard, let's see. Okay. Ooh! <laughs> fact, just cast teleportation circle and fuck stuff out of there. <laughs> Just get... You know what? There are some good ones. Some good, some useful, some not so there much. There are some good and some bad. Okay. What do yeah, I get? Hold monster what? would be good. Hold like monster would be great. <laughs> Animate objects. Let's bring that shit back. Uh... What did oh, I get, this, Oh, this also includes UA magic. I need to go further. Okay. Sorry, I was just one looking through the list wise. Oh, God. Oh, what is this? Okay, this is a spell I haven't seen in ages. Hold on. Oh no, what's the spell, Chris? Okay, as Elzion otherwise reaches into, uh, almost into okay. the book, you watch as he pulls out a magical effect. As you watch as he extends his hand as this inky black tendril wraps around the head of this thing as you cast Enervate, Enervation on it. Uh, that is a deck save on its part. Nope, it's using its last legendary resistance on that because... I'm okay with that. Uh, oh god, I'm not okay with that. I would have loved for renovation to go through. I'm just uh, redoing it through. On a successful through. save, the target takes 2d8 necrotic da- On a successful save, the target takes 2d8 necrotic damage and the spell ends. On a failed save, the target takes 4d8 necrotic damage. And until the spell ends, you can use your action on each of your turns to automatically deal 4d8 necrotic damage to the target. The spell ends if you use your action to do anything else. If the target is ever outside the spell's range, or if the target has total cover from you when the spell... Uh, whenever the spell deals damage to the target, you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage the target takes. So, roll me 2d8, and you'll regain half of this. That is its last legendary resistance, though, so I have to take that off. Okay, I'm, I'm fucking hell, look at those rolls. I didn't watch one. Disgusting. Disgusting. These two. Disgusting. Four points Disgusting. of necrotic damage. You heal four hit points. You did use its yeah. last legendary resistance, though. Yeah, that's, that's important. That was really worth it, yeah. Yeah, this thing no, doesn't. No, this no. thing doesn't understand spells, so it's just blocking everything. Burn laughs in no legendary resistances. <laughs> yeah, it's quite right. And well. you watch as five crystals on the exterior of the book light up. Nice. What do they do? <laughs> it's your progress bar. <laughs> <laughs> You've never used it before, so it's not happened until now. I know, I, I, I always feel bad for not using okay. it, but it's like, the I can't risk the RNG. That is, that is your action. That is my action. Um, That counts as casting a spell, doesn't it, for the purpose yes. of rules? Yes. Yeah. Damn. Purpose for some bullshit, but oh well, I guess. <laughs> I guess I pulled properly. a spell I don't have prepared, which is a pretty good spell, apparently. 
I mean, innovation's pretty nice. If, if, if that locked on, I'd be like, and health, 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 I mean, health, looking at death, the rest death. of them, on either side, you had dream, which you couldn't have gotten, so you would have gotten dominate person, or you would have gotten hold monster on either end. So both were mm. interesting mm. spells, because Gears is a minute and fast steps a bonus action, so you can't trigger that one. Well then, um... I think... I'm actually going to step back here. You sat with the meat shield that she should always be. Um, and that ends my turn. Okay. So, end of oh, your turn. It moves on to Queglod. This thing you see is large portions of it otherwise being cut, bruised, and otherwise begin to bleed um, small portions out into the ground around it. Um, kind of this kind of thick purplish ichor. Okay. Yeah, we need That's to... blood, I see. A lot of blood. This this thing hasn't had much of an opportunity to do anything yet. And I really don't intend on letting that change. So for an action, I'm going to cast Finger of Death. <laughs> oh boy. That's a what save? Uh, con, I have written down. Yeah, I think it's gone. Oh boy. Yeah. That is a 19. Does that succeed? Thanks to um, the upgrade to Nightmaker, that fails. Oh, that's right. Ooh, very so worth doing that at the start of the time. Scale. Yes, very much so. Go ahead and roll that damage is. for Finger of Death. Oh, yeah, we still got a time to get after this, guys. 30. So, 67. we've already been doing the crop of five years. Oh boy, 67 necrotic damage as Queglod stretches out her finger from, uh, just which holds Nightmaker. You watch as this crackling black energy shoots out from it as this almost kind of trail of spectral feathers is left behind it as it strikes the neck of this thing. It otherwise screeches, pulling its head to one side as it otherwise recoils from the damage, a large portion of the skin going black and almost crumbling to ash as it falls to the ground, the weaving now slowing around its head. Okay, and then follow-up attack at that same spot that I hit, the spiritual weapon is going to go in. Go ahead and make me an attack roll. With advantage, given your companions, I'll say it has the flanking bonus. Cool. Hits. That's 2d8 damage. 2d8. Plus your charisma mod, which I believe is plus yeah, 5. Yeah, 2d8 plus 5. So, yeah, so 16, 16 again. Yeah. 16 you do. Consistent. And the same yeah. math again, except a different hundred. <laughs> so. Okay. Thing's still standing, and it's looking not terrible, but not great. Mm. Nice. Okay. Okay, I am at this point in time confident that we can just batter this thing to death. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to try and do anything clever. Rook, it's your turn. I'm a fan you have of battering. plus 2d8 damage to all of your attacks. Hey, I'm a fan of battering to death. Um, right, okay. So. Yeah, I'm just going to make free springs it. Please kill this thing Go before ahead. these wounds hit me. Oh, they're going to hit you regardless. Right. Um, to use the beads is an action, isn't it? Correct. Cool. Duly noted. And keep in mind that haste only gives you one extra attack, so... I thought we were changing that for campaign two. Are we doing that it's, now? It's for... changing for campaign two because campaign two, I'm changing haste because I don't like that it just does incapacitation, but it doesn't state that it does. So right, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so that is hit, hit, and crit. Uh, yes. First I'll hit roll, the additional. I'll roll a bonus a action one as well while I'm at it. Then if I'm gonna go ahead. Natural one. Yeah, well, that one's gonna miss. Uh, okay. Remember the d8s. Oh, and the d8s. Oh, yes. Sorry. Right. Two uh, d8s for each. My first hit, I'm going to invoke Blazing Rune. So uh, it needs you've to already used strength. your invocation for the Dusty Rune. Okay. So you can't use any other invocation until the um, so you've taken a long rest. Don't worry. Right. You're, you're going to roll a lot of dice right shit now. me. That's a lot of dice. That's a lot of dice, because this is a crit. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. We're rolling Good ones man. and twos. Uh, 
Do I do the D8? Um, I can't remember whether it is, because it's Great Weapon... Wait, what's allowing that? It's a Great Weapon Master feat, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, great weapon... If it's part of the attack's damage, then probably. I'm just double... I mean, yeah, it's I'm... worth double-checking the wording. Yeah, I'm double-checking uh, the feat real quick. Uh... Does, does Rook have mighty bullshit? Uh, no, it's not... Is this a wombo combo we haven't done before and we're only noticing uh... now is great? Great Weapon Master, oh, okay. <laughs> once per turn when you score a critical hit with a melee attack or reduce creature. No, that's not Great Weapon Master, it is Great Weapon Fighting. Uh, okay. When you roll a 1 or a 2 on a damage die for an attack you made with a melee weapon you are wielding with two hands, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll even if the new one is a 1 or a 2. The weapon must have the two-handed property or the versatile property to gain its benefit. So it's all of your dice because it's from the melee attack. Yeah, it's from the attack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, two of them twos went to sixes, so... And this is with wrong. plus 27. Oh. Yep. Oh, 110 damage. <laughs> okay, you slice into this thing, and as you do, you otherwise carve off the head of it. As your three swings each, first one carves across the main kind of belly of it, slicing it open. Would you see nothing inside except almost this slightly void cavity? As you swing upwards, you carve partially into the neck. As its head goes upwards and lulls back down, you swing down, and the axe severs the head off of this creature as it makes almost this strange gurgling sound before it can regenerate. It is dead. Blade. It's going to turn around so that, hey guys, it's dead. Okay. I was just going to stab those like... Is that the end of your turn? Look, you're terrified. Uh, what yeah, that's, that's the end of my that's turn. Okay. What happens to me? The... Guys, First off, the enemies are dead, but combat music is still playing. Uh, the lair, at this point, if that's the end of your turn... No, 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 stay there. The lair is going to use... Um, uh, is going to use Shielding Aura on Delnot, uh, which will give him six temporary hit points. Delman, yes. Um, so he receives six temporary Delman. hit points. Uh, Malcolm, at the again. start of your turn, you take 14 points of damage. As you take that straight from your current and your maximum hit points. The wounds! Oh no! As you begin to partially bleed out, you feel almost this in this intensity as it's almost thinned your blood as you're continuing to bleed. You are just losing hit points, not necessarily taking damage. So I'm with 14. So you lose 14 right. max and 14 current. 14, one, yay! Not like I had much HP to begin with. Anything you'd like um, to do on your turn? Uh, medicine check, I guess. See what's up. Go ahead and make me a medicine check. Total? Medicine. Fourteen. Fourteen. You begin to kind of look over the wounds, and as you attempt to close them, kind of applying pressure, they still keep bleeding. Well, there's nothing I can do, so... Is that the end of your turn? Uh... I guess I'm gonna try and use... Cure Wounds on myself, see if that does That's anything. your action to use the medicine check. Oh, and then... Uh, healing Word on my... on. I guess I can't really use it on myself, so I'll use it on Sasha, since Sasha has... Uh, wounds okay. as well. What level are you casting at? Uh, go with a go with a fourth. Okay, go ahead and roll me the four d four plus your wisdom mod. total of 14. 14. Sasha, you are healed 14 hit points and you feel the wounds close up. You lose all of your wounds. Nice. <sighs> Classic case of magical healing will heal all wounds. Not necessarily. I just rolled low. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Rot roll. You need to surpass the da you need to surpass the wounds uh, the wounds damage when you cast the healing spell. And if you fail, the wounded target takes damage. 
Oh no. <laughs> Medicine takes an action, oh, but it no. doesn't do damage. So, end of Malcolm's turn. It will be this thing's turn. It skips its turn as it is dead. You watch as the portal behind it dissipates. Combat is over. Look. At this point. Oh, look. Wait, what behind it dissipates, sir? The rift of which it came through. Uh, cold blood. Okay, you're going to go and get the blood. Delman is going to immediately try and rush past this thing to go to his family. Does anyone stop him? No. No, no. I don't get him on that one. Okay. Um, get this music out of here. I mean, oh. someone can follow him. Elton's mm. going to follow oh. him. That will only get uh, less volatile. Hey, you're, you're looking pretty pretty bad there. Let me heal you up, buddy. Uh, I'm casting... Um... God, how certain of this do I want to be? Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not casting <laughs> fucking heal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. uh, I like for a second you actually said yeah, as if you were considering it. This took you a second okay. to realize what I said. I'm, I am casting a fourth level cure wounds. Okay, go ahead and roll me the forty-eight plus your wisdom modifier. That's that. That's pretty reasonable. Cool dibs on this thing's head. 21. Okay. Malcolm, you heal 21 hit points and all of your wounds are closed. Oh, crap. Can you check this for real quick? That's a lot of messages. <laughs> can you? Um, can you? How do you mean by store it? With the spell that I made. Oh, oh good no. Chris, what, what have this, you accidentally made? This thing, it, if you want to try and do that, I will tell you this now, it will not be preserved. It will rot quickly. Right. Because a bank in the ether is not refrigerated for your money. <laughs> right. Were you trying to go store this, guy, this guy's body in... He was trying but to store in... this thing's body in an in an astral bank he set up for himself. Is that, okay. is that, is okay. that the one where you have to spend money Chris. on to cast a spell? Yeah, it is. Chris, can I put forward something? Mm -hmm. Things don't age in the astral sea. It's not in the astral yeah. sea, it's in the ether, which is made oh, of dust and rust. Oh, okay. yeah, Sorry, I, someone said astral bank. I said, I said astral yeah. bank. You, you are correct there. It, extra dimensional would be the correct word, but yes. It's a planar, actually. A plane. Um, okay, planar oh, bank. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> sorry. I've read too much bullshit uh, about different planes to that's not fair. correct okay. people with I'm actually... So, Elzion, you were following him up? Yes, I'm, fo I'm following up. Okay. Uh, As you otherwise head up after him, kind of him being slower than you. What, what did you say? Sorry. Someone said something. Huh? Oh, I was moving and talking to myself, and then I hit my knee. Oh, okay. Oof. Take a point of damage. Um, in real life. In real life. <laughs> um, remember, you only have a D8 hit points. Um, so. As you otherwise follow him up, uh, upstairs, kind of travelling up the stairs after him as much as they are, slightly damaged with this thing kind of slawed out onto the surface of the air. Um, he heads upstairs and you watch as he immediately rushes to a room on the left. I'll move you up to this app here. Uh, as you otherwise head up, you see... I, 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 I'm not, like, chasing after him, I'm just going no. with him to make sure he's okay. Because if, if I'm going to kill a guy, I want him to be mentally sound. That's fair. As you otherwise head up, he otherwise rushes up to here, where you otherwise watch as the door does creep open. Um, and where the balcony has taken some damage, you watch as what looks to be a... Oh no, a... no, the door wouldn't open, because he's too young for that. He opens the door and otherwise rushes in as you see a uh, bedroom. You see a cot across the way as he otherwise heads over, and you otherwise see a um, now lying awake and lightly crying child. Uh, you hear the door behind you open, and you watch as a other, as a female elf, um, relatively old and a little bit more wrinkled, otherwise does wander out, and kind of sees who you are and does stop, kind of seeing this random intruder before looking down the balcony, and kind of takes in a gasp, looking at you and looking at it. Uh, I, 
I haven't met this woman before, have I? You don't recall her, no. I'm guessing you're my aunt. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check with disadvantage, as she's seen a giant serpent thing on the ground with a bunch of random people in her house, and her husband nowhere to be seen. Okay, uh, that's 21. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. am your aunt. Lovely to meet you. She, um, looks at, she looks at you, and there's kind of a pause as she does kind of back up into the doorframe as Delmon otherwise kind of walks out cradling cradling this um, young baby and does kind of slowly make his way over to who is presumably his wife. No one's hurt, are they? He kind of... He uh, rocks the child. Thankfully, no. What... What's that? He kind of pauses. That's not supposed to do anything. What did you say? I... I was having a moment of realization. I invoked the name of my god just as a Exclamation more than anything. I, 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 I'm i specifically not saying the mask. Yeah. I'm sort of saying... Go ahead and make me an intelligence check in such a way that you can convey it so he'll understand. DC isn't high for this. This will just be a natural kind of language. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 16. Yeah. You convey it in such a way that he kind of look, looks at you and goes... The protective magics of here are gone. What does that mean? He otherwise look. He ignores your question, kind of immediately turning to his, uh, turning to his wife, and hands off his son to, uh, to her and goes, "Go downstairs. Go past the creature and go outside." Emiriel is waiting there. Please just go back to his place. It'll be safe there. The place is safeguarded. I'll handle whatever is going to happen here. She kind of trustingly nods and begins heading down the stairs as he kind of follows behind her. The child it's still Nice to meet you, aunt-in-law! The rest of you, as you watch as this otherwise young... Oh, not a young. Older um, elven woman otherwise comes downstairs with a infant uh, baby and who is currently crying as you see across the way, across from where this thing has died on the ground, the, the door at the back opens and you watch as one of the servants kind of... kind of almost throws up before kind of heading back to the kitchen. Okay. Elzion, at this point, as you otherwise kind of say, as he otherwise turns to you, Delman, kind of on the top of the um, stairway here, he looks at you. You didn't know, did you? Uh, clearly not. That name that you've been invoking is... That for Maldoras. Elton just has a deadpan face, just sort of stops for a moment and just goes, How fucking boss it is! If he's, disturbed the, if he's disturbed the magic here, he's going to. This I invited that safe. fucker to my wedding! He, Sorry, he not looks the at, moment. He, no, he looks at you with a pause. No. What? Oh. What? Your mother. I, okay. 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 Sam's aware. No. Elgin's taking a moment to piece it together. Yeah. Delman yeah. takes a moment, and the two of you figure it out together that your mother Fuck. is now in potentially an incredible danger. Okay. She won't talk to me. I said some very harsh things to her. She'll talk to me. I we can get, get us there. Back. Good. So, so one of, as long as one of you can focus, we can head there now. The other way is kind of darts down the stairs. Okay. Uh, he is going. You heard the edge of this conversation as he darts down the stairs. As Burn is currently busy scooping up blood and sawing off parts of this thing. I will use eighth level. I'd love to start. An eighth level what? 
spell slot this time. Okay, use your 8th level spell slot, placing your hand on the surface of the thing. You watch as Rook, as you're otherwise holding the head, you pull it free with the last bits of sinew attached. As you, uh, as you otherwise watch, as it kind of begins to fold in on itself, like... Oh. As it then is portaled I, away I, to... Earlier, I kindly so. requested... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aw, my head's gone. No, your head is fine. Oh, you still got the head. head. The rest oh, of it is not. Oh. I, El, El, Elgin's like running down the stairs. Okay, down and I'm just like, guys, stop. We need to. Uh, we need to get back now. My mother is in grave danger. Um. um Everyone, gather around. Does someone have a focus for where you need to go? Um. Yeah. The tavern. I mean, we've. Yeah, we we're all from the tavernish, so... Right. He re reaches out his hand towards you, Burn. Oh. Ah. Uh, I give oh, him... Oh, wait, no. <gasps> no, he used his seventh for glibness. He's already used his eighth and he used his ninth in combat. He can't teleport. Uh, uh, how, when, we, when, we came, when we came up to here, how far was the closest tree from here? From this building? About ten feet. We can go outside and use the tree. Let's go. I Let's travel as the old elves did. As the fucking hicks do. Fucking wood elves. Living in the trees instead of using them to build mansions. What the fuck's wrong with them? <laughs> so, you rush outside as you otherwise kind of go outside. You see Emirio otherwise, or your father otherwise standing there kind of looking confused and bewildered as he otherwise looks up as you all run out with um, uh Delman. El El Elson's gonna shout out, "Mother's in danger. Go to go help. I'll send you details later." He otherwise looks very, relatively confused, but otherwise nods. As the guards otherwise do, kind of escort them elsewhere. It was lovely meeting you, Dad. Oh, do we get our one guard <laughs> back? Not the moment. No. Let's go. You don't have your guard at this point. Oh, poor guy. Quickly, quickly, tree, tree, tree. Yes, yes, As yes. you rush over, casting transport via plants, you all rush through, heading through to the other side. Where as you do, you look upon the surface of a burning tavern. The wood oh. in flames, the roof partially collapsed in. Oh. And you see, otherwise floating oh. above it, oh. a good, maybe 60 feet up, a large tentacle-like creature with a massive shell for a hide tendrils whipping down, striking at civilians, and clawing them up. And that is where we will end our session tonight. Holy... Is, is that what I think it is, Chris? It's a nautiloid. Oh, oh my god! What the hell's a nautiloid? Okay, yeah. right. Infid, star-faring creatures. You want, you want to know how they get across the stars? On a nautiloid. Imagine a sea snail, then make it bigger and give it tentacles. Nautiloids is actually the name of a type of fossil, I believe, but, um... Mm -hmm. But in this instance, you will see this thing flowing above the tavern, which is very vaguely on fire. Clear up. Which okay, tavern? Our go. door, the one that she's at? Yours. Uh, because our. you teleported to your tree back home. Oh, good god damn it! My dragon guys, head's in there! Guys, I can only apologise. This is entirely... My family is in there! Your family is in there. So are all of your staff. Who were drunk and passed out. So nice. were Beholden Chronicle. This is true. So, so next session might become a rescue oh, mission. Well, I wouldn't agree. Mm. Don't worry, I get to use these maps next time. Oh, can, oh I, these I, ones. Yeah, <laughs> good for me. I wouldn't agree. as well. Maverick was here. So. Right. For the stream, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll be back next week where things will begin to unravel a bit more. Bye bye. I hate Bye. this. Bye. Bye.